Hello everyone, and welcome everyone who was able to make it. Uh, you have joined us back for Icewindale Session 2. Oh, I'm so excited. As always, I am Artless Paper or Sophie, who will be playing Soot, and this is my lovely fiancé and Dungeon Master. I'm Carrie on the DM. I'll be the Dungeon Master for this campaign. Uh, it's so wonderful to have some new faces, and I, I've been thinking about this campaign all week. Um, some general admin for the campaign. Of course, there's going to be spoilers because we're playing a set campaign. And also, if there's ever any mic issues or sound quality issues, please let us know in the chat and I will sort it as soon as possible or in a break. And uh, Charles, if it's okay with you, I would also like to show off some of the lovely impersonas uh, we've had drawn uh, this week. Yeah, go for it. That sounds great. So, for context, um, obviously my character Sir is a warlock and has a familiar who's an imp, but she also has the spell Flock of Familiars. So we had the idea that, um, sorry, we had the idea that people could make impersonas that when I cast the Flock of Familiars spell, might appear. Very exciting. Uh, so, without further ado, here are some of the entries that we've had from our Discord. Uh, starting off with the first one we had done, this is the lovely Winter Imp from Kevin Porro. Just, just lovely. Uh, then we had Rose from Buffy Stars. Uh, from Dallas Kenyora, we had the Earth Elemental style imp, the little D20. Very nice. Uh, this also was from Karen Poro and featured all the imps we had so far at that point. I am in I love. love it. It's so good. Just, just so cute. And this is Cole, my personal familiar. Very nice. Uh, this, oh, very excited, uh, was from our friend Nemo with his bone imp. What was, what was the name, Charles? Bimp. Uh, Bimp. Bump, I think. Bump. <laughs> Very creative. Yes. I love it. <laughs> uh, this was Apple Buns Imp, who likes to hide in Soot Scarf. So adorable. Uh, this was, oh, I have to get the username correct. Uh, an imp from Tolly, Tolly something, I have it pinned. Uh, from Blue Warfare. Yes, and I, I believe they are in the stream. I love the little stinger tail. It's so cool. Uh, and our latest entry was from our lovely friend Jules of their stained glass, oh, stained glass themed imp. Uh, very cathedral cleric esque. I'm, I'm in love. Uh, for everyone who's drawn an imp persona so far, thank you. I love them. It adds so much flavour to the campaign, and I never thought one spell would, would create such a little community, so I'm, I'm very pleased. I'm so happy that Warlocks can just take it naturally as well. It's so good. Mm -hmm. It works so well. It's lovely. I didn't think we'd use it so quickly in the campaign as well, because we've already used it to, uh, to steal a few iron ingots, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it, it's been super useful. Super good. Uh, so, with me uh, gushing about people's imps, uh, Charles, you have free reign. Feel free to DM for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm honoured uh, to DM for you. <laughs> Thank you. As you should be. Okay. <laughs> Not sure if I should feel uh, insulted. <laughs> or honoured. Uh, right. I mean, you're my fiancé, you're, you're stuck with me, DMing for me either way. There's no escaping it. Indeed I am. Alright, let's get to it. So, uh, last session, as per uh, Sophie's uh, TikTok, um, where she did, she did a little uh, recap, um, we started in Bryn Shanna, went down to uh, Tarmos, and then found ourselves in Termali. Uh, we picked up a little bit of loot, including the wonderful Ring of Warmth, 
uh, which gives you resistance to cold, and uh, you can ignore uh, the effects of temperatures below, uh, I think it's 50 um, uh, degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not sure. I'll have to check that. But it's a, it's a very good ring, uh, nevertheless. And you ventured out with your companion, uh, Sefik Kaltrin, to the uh, site of uh, Ubok's death. This uh, dwarf had been torn apart, and a group of goblins had stolen his iron ingots that he was uh, digging through the Dwarven Valley. So, you managed to track down the, uh, the goblin cart, and with the help of your familiars, steal back uh, all of the iron ingots except for two, which uh, Sephika Kaltrin uh, got. So, uh, we're in the moments after that, as you, uh, as you kind of sit in the snow and uh, con contemplate your, uh, your next move. Oh, that's where we ended, wasn't it? We, we'd taken the ingots and we were about to head uh, further in the mountain for our next task. That's true. Yeah. Mm, okay, okay. So, um, as you're uh, sitting down, Sefek, who, um, as per last quest, uh, is not wearing any winter gear because he doesn't feel the effects of the cold, looks over to you and says, um, well, seeing as I uh, got two of those iron ingots, maybe I could have maybe 30% uh, of, uh, of the total uh, reward. I mean, I, I did help you that much, so... I'm yet to collect um, four bloodstones, so I'd be happy to give you one of them. Call it... Uh, Call it two, and then that'd be a deal. That's half, not 30%. I mean, they offered you six bloodstones, didn't they? Yes. <laughs> yes, so two would be a third. Look. Mm. Fine, but you must continue to help me on this journey up the mountain. Oh, already on the roll. First roll of the session. No pressure. Straight persuasion. Uh, yes. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Okay. I think we're lucky today. We'll see. No, no, no. Uh, we're so lucky. We're good. No, no, no. We'll see. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, Sefek uh, raises one of his sharp eyebrows towards you and says, uh, Well, uh, I, I, I'll help you, sure. I mean, it's a, it's a good deed, isn't it? I mean, so, uh, that's why I'm doing it. What, what are you doing exactly? Uh, well, there's this lovely man who's a painter and his his friend, who I suspect is a lover, um, is up the mountain and hasn't returned, but his dog has. Right. So, so I just said he's... while I was up there I would have a look to see if he's okay. Okay. Sure. Alright, well, let's do it. You any good at climbing mountains? I mean, I don't have climbing gear, so... Nor do, no. nor do I. I should have, should have got climbing gear. Ah. You could probably get some at Kerconic. Are we far from Kerconic? So, uh, let me show you the map. And this red line indicates where you are currently. So, if you're going mm. straight to Kelvin's Cairn, It'll be another day, so eight hours of travel, um, because you're going over the over the wasteland, and uh, it's a little slower. Uh, however, if you take the roads, it will be I think fourteen and a half hours, so 
roughly two days. What, so if we went to Kerkonic and then took the road from there, it would be 14 hours? Yeah, so Tamerlane, Targos, Bridge Under, through the East Way, down to Kerdinivil, and then up to Kerkonic. That'd be 14 and a half hours. No. No. We don't need the climbing gear, it's fine. We'll be fine. Okay. But for context, can I can I tell people something? Yes. So I don't know if anyone remembers my my Dragonborn Ira. But this is where this is where she had her first near death experience. <laughs> and I that's all I'm gonna say. Okay, you can continue now. <laughs> okay. So you're going to Kelvin's Cairn with no climbing gear. I mean, get that right. how, I can't get to uh, Kirkonic because of the the Dwarven Valley in the way. You can go through the Dwarven Valley. No, that's so dangerous. Like, could we... Hmm. Would Lonelywood have anything? That's a town, right? Lonelywood might have things. It'd, it'd be based upon a roll, and the DC would be 20. Yeah. Okay. I'm. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I hear you, chat. Yeah. Let's let's get the climbing gear just to be safe. I am playing a solo game. I have to be a little careful. I feel like being cautious is the best policy here. Yeah. But I'm only the DM. What do I know? I mean, you you just know the entire campaign. Back to front and where we're all fail, encounter things, die. It'll be fine. Yeah. I turn to uh, Sephic and I say, "You know what? I, I'm awful at climbing. We should probably get some help. You don't even have proper winter clothing, so let's." I don't need winter clothing. Yeah, I know, but for climbing and holding ice, surely. He balls up a big ball of snow with his hand and like rubs it all over his hands and uh, and then says like he holds out his hand for you to hold I put my hand in his and he is just pleasantly warm that is really strange um make me a uh, medicine check yeah I'd love to I don't know how good I am 17 again 17 okay okay thank you uh, roll 20 roll 20 you're gonna have to work uh, work a little harder for me now um, no no gonna, gonna have to you know uh so with a 17 um he's not exactly cold but he oh, uh, warm rather he's not exactly warm but he is warmer than you you are fucking freezing. E right? Even with the ring of warmth? Even with the ring of warmth, you're in uh, you're in conditions that that no person should be living in. Um, it's just been a blizzard, so you know the the conditions are, are probably the worst they could get. If you didn't have winter clothing on, uh, you'd likely die within maybe an hour. Okay. May I ask something? Yes. Um the ring of warmth. To what degree does it help me? Like, can I can I walk in the snow and be okay? Or um, how about you read out the uh, Ring of Warmth's uh, description and uh, and what it does? Uh, do I have that on my sheet? It might be on your treasure. Bio. I I didn't do it. I'm a bad player. Um. Right. <laughs> I'm the DM sorry. Will step in. No worries. I can't Google it. I'm streaming the roll twenty. I'm sorry. All good. All good. You must know what this does. Okay. Uh, while wearing this ring, you have resistance to cold damage. In addition, you and everything you wear and carry are unharmed by temperatures as low as minus fifty degrees Fahrenheit. 50, minus 50 degrees is... how much is that in Celsius? My brain can't do the numbers. 
that is 10 degrees Celsius. Oh, that's cold. But not blizzard cold. Yeah. So do when it goes below that, do I just suddenly like feel all the cold or just a little bit? So imagine the ring as a radiator. You feel it on your on your on your bare skin. <laughs> and it's nice, right? It gives you this this gentle warmth through you. But um slowly the cold outside as it gets lower than that begins to to kind of gnaw away at this at this warm shield that you have so yes there is a almost a sudden uh, shift when you get to temperatures below um uh, minus 50 degrees fahrenheit okay so it's it's helpful but it's not it's it's not the cure no but it is it is helpful you know i mean it might protect you in water for example or maybe it won't who knows mm -hmm. apparently um it's that's a uh, perfectly warm spring weather in finland <laughs> i love it okay sorry i just had to get that in my head because i didn't know if i was role playing being freezing or slightly cold or perfectly fine all good. I'm just I'm a I'm a bit cold. I'm feeling it now. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're definitely feeling it. Okay. Okay, uh then through the Dwarven Valley, I suppose. Alright. I am I'm really nervous. I I'm really nervous to do this. Didn't want to, but I'm in gear. Should have thought about that. So I'm going to show you something, mm -hmm. uh, a little uh, extreme cold. Uh, oh, this is very small. So during Aurel's everlasting winter, the average temperature in Icewind Dale is minus 49 degrees Fahrenheit or uh, minus 45 degrees Celsius. Um, Windchill can lower these temperatures by as, mu by as much as 80 degrees. So if it's windy, like it was just now during the blizzard, it's cold. Okay, so we're taking it that like the average I'm fine for, but when something different happens, like a wind, a blizzard, a heavy snow, I'm getting cold. Yeah, exactly. Got it. You could still die from the cold. Okay. Um, with this ring on. So this midsummer guy then. So, um, coming back to that medicine check. Uh, he is not, it's not so much that he is warm, he is merely warmer than you, and your outer layer would be below minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit, so he might be at minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Which is, it, it, it is definitely strange, but he, you know, he has this blessing, so maybe, maybe that protects him, you know? Mm -hmm. Who knows? It's just it's just a little strange, that's all. Yeah. I I really, really like this guy. I really hope there's not something awful about him. There probably will be, right? But let's not think about it. He seems uh like he's willing to help you for now. I mean he seems like a very mercenary type. Can we um can we get the arm up of him? Yes we can. We didn't show this last stream, but I think you will understand why I trust this man. He is a dangerous boy. I trust him. I love him. I'm sorry, but anyone with that hairstyle, I am just inclined to trust. Blue sword as well. I've seen him use that, right? You have, yes. Nice. Very nice. I should also update you on the crests that you've seen so far. You went through, let's see. Uh, oh, interesting. Sargos and Tamri don't seem to have a crest. Unless I've missed it. I'll check if they have crests, but uh, usually all of the um, all of the areas, all of the uh, towns, sorry, have uh, crests. Mm. Yes, I am simping. Got another one added onto the uh, Icewind Dale dating sim right here. 
This is a uh, is it Sephic Sephic Caltro, Child of Midsummer, added onto the list. Okay. <laughs> to trust or to not trust the hairstyle. I mean, he's got a good hairstyle. You can absolutely trust him. Absolutely, so. it's not like every character I've ever encountered in a campaign like this is usually a villain. A white dragon in disguise. Oh my gosh. <gasps> no, that would be the coolest thing. That would be the coolest thing. <laughs> Are you looking for all the crests? Uh, yep, I found them there. Thank you. Hello. Uh, you've not missed too much. Uh, I've been... Uh, talking about the Ring of Warmth, and then we've been uh, simping over uh, Sephic Caltro. We found the art for him. Uh, so this is the official art for the NPC. And we've been discussing how much we love him. This is all. <laughs> and here are the two crests of the closest that you've been. So this is Targos and Tamerlane. Is this is Tamerlane the one with Old Bitey? Uh, no, that's Prince Jack. Oh, yeah, of course. Very nice. Okay, I'm I'm too excited. Can can we can we go? Can we can we get over the Dwarven Valley, please? Sure, sure we can. Sure. Okay. So, uh, with that, you are continuing your travel to Kelvin's Can or to Kerkonig. Uh, which is the one I was told had the climbing gear that we could go to by the artist? Uh, Kerkonig, the town, has climbing gear. Kelvin's Cairn is the mountain. Uh, the town, the town, please. The town, yeah, Kerkonig. Okay, that will take around 14 hours to get to. No, no, we can go through the Dwarven Valley, this is what we talked about. I know, but seeing as you're in the wild, it will take a longer time because there are no, um, there are no routes there are no uh, predetermined paths, so it's a little harder to traverse. Okay. Uh, I'm really debating this. We're so close to go all the way back on a time sensitive mission. It's your choice. I don't I don't want- if we can't go through the Dwarven Valley, we have to go all the way round. I don't want to do it. I just want to go straight up the mountain. Okay. You you can go up the mountain with no climbing gear if you wish. I'm doing it. Harder. I'm- I, I'm listening to my gut. I'll be fine. Perfectly fine. Okay. She's chosen. I believe in me. Yes. Follow the gut. We've, we've got this. It's gonna be fine. So, uh, with that... Right. Oh, Charles, your your mic is cutting out. I can't hear you. Oh no, his wires come out of his PC. Shouldn't have stood up, really. My apologies. There you go. <laughs> My legs. <laughs> I've also turned you up a bit, so you should be a little louder now. Okay, perfect. Uh, right. Uh, so, with that, you begin the journey. So, it's gonna be maybe like six to eight hours to the base of Kelvin's Cairn, to from where you are right now. What time of day is it? Oh my goodness, it's so stressful. It's it's around the morning. You you slept, and uh, and now you are uh, you're ready to go. Okay. Yeah, that's, let's just head straight off then. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Let's do this. So, thankfully, no blizzards hit you as you uh, as you make your way towards Kelvin's Cairn. And um, as you're going, make me a perception check. Absolutely. I just closed my sheet. 
Good job. I know, I know. A pro player right here. Where is <laughs> it? What am I doing? There I am. I'm really stressed about this, can you tell? What warp tech, sorry? Perception. Perception. What? Nat 20! Nat 20, everyone! We did it. We've beaten the game, everything is fine. I think that's the second Nat 20 of the game, isn't it? Yes, I believe so. I think we had one last session. Amazing. Alright. Wonderful. So, um, with that, you, uh... Yeah. You see a band of dwarves and they are they're walking down the side of the valley using a steep set of stone hewn um, steps as they uh, as they go and um, it would be possible to either sell your bloodstones with them or perhaps um, offload the iron ingots which are rather heavy mm. um, to them uh, possibly. They might even have climbing gear. They might even have climbing gear. I swear, if, imagine if I went all the way around, like, the 14-hour trip through the towns, and then, like, I just bumped into someone and they were like, hey, here's some climbing gear. Or I found someone the, at the base of the mountain. <laughs> okay. Um, I wave over to the dwarfs and, like, um, hey, uh, excuse me. Dwarves look over at you and, like, raise a hand but continue on what they're doing. Uh, can I come up to them? Like, and I, as I do, I'm saying, I'm approaching, I'm not in danger, I'm not dangerous, um, hello, hello. There's four of them and they, they look around at each other and you can hear them talking. He's got, he's got be, and like, they're talking in a, in a language you don't understand. Mm -hmm. um, before one of them turns to you and says, Go away. Um, I'm sorry, I just wanted to ask a couple of things. Uh, do you do trades? And I show, like, one of the bloodstones. You want a trade? Mm-hmm. Alright, that's what you got. Uh, yeah, I got, a, I've just got some bloodstones. Uh, I also have... There is nothing useful here. <laughs> no, yeah, that that's it. That's the, um, the only thing. For the, for the natural 20, um, certain types of dwarves covet uh, gemstones. Oh, are you getting me to sell the diamond? Maybe. Do I not need that? For, you said it was too small to use for... Uh, what spell is that? Revivify. Revivify. Too small for Revivify, right? True. However, uh, you could keep it and um, work up the money or um, find other pieces of diamond to make a, what is it, 300 uh, GP diamond. Or I get the gold for a, a healing potion. Keep in mind that you cannot, um, you cannot uh, cast Revivify yourself, but you can potentially get a cleric to cast it. Yeah. But of course that would require them to be at your dead body. Mm -hmm. I don't want to sell it for now. I, I just want to trade the bloodstones. Okay. So, um, he clicks his hand impatiently, like uh, his big, like heavy gloved hand for the bloodstones. <laughs> I, I, ha I have, I have, I, how many do I have? I think I have one two. more. No, I only have one now. If, uh, no, you have two. no, I traded one for the herbal uh, pouches. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. I've made use of them already. Nice, nice. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, sure. You have one. Um, I I was thinking gold, or if you have a climbing kit. The dwarf takes off his big goggles, and with these beady uh, brown eyes, he looks at the uh, at the uh, bloodstone. And this uh, perfect icosahedron, um, with its liquid core kind of um, rolls slightly as he turns it around and looks through the facets. Hey, that's a good gem. Hmm. 30. 
gold pieces. Ooh, no, they're worth 50, aren't they? You know that, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. Um, I was told by another dwarf they were worth 50. But Ugh. I could lower the price if you had the climbing kit. Yes, well, if I lost 50, I was trying to put a swifty on you. Oh, it's okay. I mean, I, I can understand. Right, 50. Um, and, uh... What kind of check do you want to make to uh, to determine if they have climbing gear? Do you want to do a persuasion check? Uh, yeah, persuasion seems fair. Yeah. Oh no, that's an 8. That's not what we want. Okay. We do not have uh, climbing gear, but uh, we do have gold, if you want it. Um, I mean, I'd take the gold if you didn't have the climbing gear. Um, yeah. It's just, I'm going up Kerkonic. Kerkonic? Yeah, yeah, t I'm, I'm looking for, for someone. Apparently they got hurt, maybe? So so I was I was thinking as a favour of, of going to help them. Even they are lost, they're dead. No, no, no. I'm good to try. Nah. No one survives up Keldon's care. Well, I mean, I'll be more likely to survive if you had a climbing kit for me. Yeah, there's loads of dead bodies you get a climbing kit off there. Aww, that's kind of gross, though. Yeah, they don't need them anymore, do they? Mm, no. No. Okay, I'll take the 50. Alright. And uh, he gives you 50 uh, gold pieces. Thank you. I'm no longer poor. Oh, let me delete the bloodstone. Actually, I'm just going to mark it as zero because I'm getting more, so. Sure. Perfect. And I am. Um, I wave them on their way and thank them. And they stick a thumb up and begin to go back down the, uh, the, the valley. Okay, uh, well, that was successful, Sethic. Apart from no climbing kit, but the dead bodies, right? I mean, it's not the first time we've picked through pockets, so... Yeah, I mean, it's not the best, that's for sure, but um, we'll make do. Yeah, okay. I'm actually getting a bit nervous now, even if the dwarves didn't want to go up there. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. As you say. Alright, off we go. Mm. And with that, you see Kelvin's care looming in the background or in the foreground rather because you're uh, you're going towards it so you arrive at the base of kelvin's care looking up at it um it's getting towards the evening so um you don't have the you don't have the best view but um you may still be able to plot a uh, route up the side of Kelvin's camp. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, with the two of us, we can probably get a good idea of where's best to go up. I imagine there'd even be a trail. Uh, yeah, there might well be a trail. Okay, uh, so would you like to sleep or would you like to make a survival check to uh, see if you can find a trail. A uh, trail, please. I'm not sleeping yet. Okay. Make a, a normal survival check. Uh, it would be a disadvantage, but Sephic is helping you. Thirteen. Thirteen. Hey, th that was alright. Okay. A thirteen's... Yeah, it's okay. Um, with a thirteen, you see where a trail would start, uh, where the snow is more compressed, where there are a few... Um, hooks within the, within the rock, uh, but apart from that, you can't see anything else. Okay. That wasn't great, was it? <laughs> I, I guess we just take the most uh, direct 
good looking route, you know? Obviously we just can't go straight forward. Gotta find a place with a bit of a foothold. Let's just wing it, come on, it'll be fine. I'm, I'm really nervous, I really want to get there. So, are you getting to the climb straight away? How long of the day do we have left? It is the evening. Oh, if it's the evening, then I'd like to find a place to sort of shelter next to uh, Kelvin's can for the night. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, so, uh, make me a another survival check. Absolutely. Survival, survival, survival. Fifteen. Slightly better. Okay, mm -hmm. a fifteen. Uh, with a fifteen, you don't find anywhere... Um, too sheltered, but you are able to just um, go inside your uh, your little place. Yeah, so. I was just thinking in case there's like a, a snowstorm while I'm sleeping. Yeah, I mean, you don't have a tent, do you? I mean, I probably tell Sephic if something happens to just pick up the lamp and take us somewhere. Oh, actually, you do have a tent. It's in your inventory. Yeah, I mean, I don't need that for the first part of the night. I just need that for the second part of the night. Yes, however, if you do get up and build a tent, it will interrupt your uh, sleep. Okay, this is, I'd do it prior then. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, with that... Can you do me a favour, Charles? I'm sorry to... Yeah. But our, our little chicken is screaming. Oh, hello. Can you right. can you give him a little bit of attention and put his blanket over him? All right, back in a sec. <laughs> well, while uh, the DM's gone, um, let's win the campaign. <laughs> yes, little chicken break. Um, for anyone wondering, uh, chicken. Uh, his real name is Kia, and he is a cockatiel, and we love him. He went on many adventures. He's like three years old now. Very sweet. Something personal familiar. He did also uh, fly away and we, we got him back. Amazing time. Little little chicken story time while you're sorting him out. Yeah. Sorry, we don't have any millet to give him. You've always gotta have a little a little little mascot, you know. Yes, adventure verb. I think if he was a class, he'd be he'd be a ranger. Oh gosh, yeah, this is a fun story. Uh, so after like three days of searching, uh, and me doing my normal advertising thing, uh, I'd got people in our community looking for him. Someone messaged me that he, they'd found him in a tree. We went there straight away. Uh, on this long like a uh, country walk. He was in a tree. So we brought his cage and some food and he he came down to it and Charles I had his flat cap on and we caught him in the hat. I know, never never been prouder carrying our, our little a little friend. You got back at perfect timing. We just we just did the little chicken story break. Amazing. Yeah. I, I had to carry that bird's cage for I think it was two miles as we walked through the fields Is to it get to where it was. Two miles there, two miles back. Yeah. He went to a nature reserve. He did, yeah. At least he had a nice time. Uh, he's home and safe. He is. He almost got chased by sparrow hawks. But that's a that's another story. Now I'm just getting distracted because I'm scared. <laughs> Okay, should we get back to it? Yes, please. Um, so I've made a tent, and uh, tell you what, let's sleep my four hours in the tent, and then sleep four hours in the lamp, because then I retain more warmth. Okay, sure. I feel like sure. it's more efficient. Okay, let's do that. So, this is a two-person tent. Uh, do you allow Sethic inside your tent? Icewind Dale dating sim! Uh, she makes the tent, and uh, <laughs> I can't stop seeing this as like one of those dating things where it's like the two options of like, do you let them in or not? 
<laughs> um, yeah, she pokes her head out and says, Sethic, are you just gonna sleep in the snow? Always. Did you... Did, did you wanna... It's a two-person tent, it's the only one I could get. Did, did you wanna... Oh. I mean, I'll be in a lamp for uh, half of it. A two-person tent, is it? Yeah, I, I mean... So you're inviting me in? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna be in the lamp for half the night anyway, um, so I, I don't mind, it'll basically be yours for like four hours. Alright, sure, I'll, uh, I'll share your tent. Y yeah, that sounds, sounds good. I don't, I don't snore or anything, uh, so, <laughs> um, anyway, um, I'm gonna get to sleep, uh, yeah. And she sort of like awkwardly like cozies up she uses her scarf as like a blanket when she sleeps cuddles up that's that way nice. like, yeah i think it's it's big enough that she might even offer him a little bit okay so he um he refuses any blankets and just uh, lays down and within seconds he is asleep he's do I do I be creepy and like can I can I just check I wanna just give a in general investigation check over him while he sleeps. This will be a medicine check. Okay. Just I don't wanna like touch him, I'm just like looking. Just to be really clear. Okay. And what are you looking for? Like his breathing. Like, is there any magical glowy stuff going on? Like what is this curse? Sure, sure, sure. Thirteen? Thirteen. Okay, how close are you getting to him? I mean, we're sharing a tent, that's pretty close. Okay. Um... He's laying down, completely still. And... You... Slowly push yourself up. And you look over to him. And, um... mouth. Um, uh-huh. And you hear nothing. There's no breathing. Not a single breath. I know what he is. Is he reborn? Is he a reborn? Is he Who undead? Knows? Who knows? Oh my gosh. But he's warm. He's not cold. He's warmer than you. It's, it's kind of cute. Okay, she's like really freaked out, but then like... And then remembers how like kind he's been, you know? And sort of settles down. Um, I think even without realising, she kind of like snuggles in a bit to him because he's so warm. Okay, sure. Just, just a little bit. Nothing, nothing weird, you know? Okay, cool, cool. Penguin cuddle, you know? Yeah, penguin cuddle. Sure, sure. <laughs> Blue Wolf, uh, I'm very confused. <laughs> what is he? Um, there's a race in D&D uh, &D called Reborn. It is a person who has died and come back. Okay. So... Let us continue. You, um... You, you cuddle. And, um... The tent slowly begins to get covered with snow. You can see how taut the tent is getting. It's a good tent. Um, it's like a dark, a dark uh, green in colour. Mm-hmm. And as it slowly gets covered, um, it takes the weight of this snow well. So, with that, you fall off to sleep. What's your passive perception? Uh, 14. 14, yeah. Okay. No, don't just so. say okay and not say anything else. <laughs> you, you can't do that. <laughs> So, 
your sleep is dreamless and four hours pass and um, you softly kind of um, wake up it's um you know it's kind of like the five hour mark you've you've missed your ticket a little bit but you could still go inside of the um, of the lab if you wish uh you know, I was going to, but I'm now thinking, if I'm in a tent, and I'm next to Suffolk who's warm anyway, I might be best keeping the lamp in case I need it for the emergency up uh, up the mountain. Cool. However, Suffolk's not here. <gasps> no. He's not? No, he's not. Oh, is his stuff here? he's just up and left? He doesn't really have much stuff. This man is so strange. I, I love him. I could do a whole campaign just based around this guy. Okay, um, so I was gonna sleep, but she probably like pokes her head out and like with her lantern looks around. I don't want to shout out because I'm in a pretty dangerous place right now, right next to the mountain. Oh, sure. So you go outside. Uh, make me a perception check. Uh, yeah, please. Seventeen. Seventeen. Mm -hmm. Lucky number. This uh, this uh, quest, isn't it? Yes. So you look around, and you see footsteps in the snow. The snow has not yet fallen enough to cover these footsteps. Okay. With that, I will call out. I'm not leaving where my tent is, because I will never get back to it in the snow. Right? Like, I wouldn't be able to see it. Is it still blizzardy, actually? How, how far away could I, could I walk? The wind is blowing, but it is not uh, blizzardy. So your uh, range of sight is um, it's about 150 to 200 feet. Okay, and I can't see him. Uh, yeah, that's correct. I've just realised if I go looking for him, I have interrupted sleep, don't I? That's correct. Do I currently have interrupted sleep anyway, from getting up and looking outside the tent? Uh, I'm gonna say no. Okay, you're very you're very kind. I genuinely think he's gonna come back. I'm gonna kick myself if he doesn't, but I'm gonna go back to sleep. I'm gonna go in my lantern. Okay. Because uh, I've, I've just realised in the morning it resets anyway, so I, I might as well. Your thing. I... If he's gone. If he's gone, oh my gosh. He's not gonna go because he won't get his bloodstones. Nah, yeah, we're fine. Into the lantern. Okay. And with that, and with a puff of soot, and smoke, you disappear into your lantern. Yes. How about you uh, describe the inside again for any people who are new? Oh, absolutely. Um, so the inside of her, la uh, her genie lamp is in her lantern, and inside is like a comfy living room, a big hearth, um, nice sofas, like a table for like crafting. A lot of like cooking pans and stuff. Uh, not for her to cook, but her her patron likes to. And occasionally you can see some of the imps hanging around and being mischievous. A lot of the imps like to dwell within the fire, as they have, uh, you know, they don't they don't take any damage from the hot coals. Um, it's uh, it's very comforting for them. So you see a few like uh, marshmallows, uh, sitting and roasting in the fire. Oh yeah, that's a really cute idea. If anyone uh, is in the chat has an impersona yet, feel free to describe what they're doing, because I think that's really cute. So, uh, Dallas Kinira's Raven is searching for cookies. Uh, that one was... Doo -doo -doo. Which imp? This imp! Very cute. I can always imagine these uh, rocks as cookies now. <laughs> so, 
you uh, you look around and you see your patron. He is sitting down at a table, and set out in front of him are a number of trinkets, the trinkets that you found before, with a um, with a brush, a little bit of polish, and a and a, and a, a rag. He's slowly and carefully uh, polishing them and bringing them to a nice shine. Are these his trinkets or things I've brought him? These are things that you've brought him. Mm. Oh, like the little uh, knickknacks and trinkets I pick up that I get memories from. If they're useless, exactly. sometimes I bring them to him as gifts. Yeah, like 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 the lock, for example, that you got off uh, Ubok. Oh yeah, I intend to return that though. But if he wants to polish it up, that's that's perfectly fine. Wait, does he just have that? I didn't give that to him. <laughs> yeah, he just has that. Sit so must have given it to him. <laughs> Definitely the imps. You must mean Cole. Oh, yes, yes. So, Cole, look. I made a mistake making them so similar, but I don't regret the names. Okay. So, he turns around towards you and says, Oh, good evening. It's, uh, it's good to see you. Oh, uh, good evening. You're um, doing some cleaning. Yes, I am. Is it keeping you busy? It does. Though, um, you seem to think that I'm more busy. Are you not? I am not. Where, where do you go? Elsewhere. Do you have another home? No. Do you... Okay. Actually, I've never asked this. Do you have other... Um... Uh, you, you're my patron, so what, what would I be to you? Um, I don't know what's the word for devotee. Would that be the word? Sure. Do, do you have others you go visit? Do you truly wish to know if I have others? No, I just no. didn't think about it. Then why do you ask? I I like to know more about you. You're still quite mysterious. Well, I'd be happy to answer questions about me. About me? About myself. Oh, sorry. I miss that. <laughs> um, what do you do in your spare time for fun? Is this what you do for fun? I sit and watch you and listen to the things that you're doing. I polish all of the trinkets that you uh, bring me. I cook. I tend to this place. It does get dusty. All right. And recently, I make healing potions for you. <laughs> I do love it when you make healing potions. Um, wait, you, um, you watch everything? You hear everything? The times where I can watch is when Cole is paying attention. When Cole is not paying attention, I cannot watch. I... But I do hear everything that goes on. Okay, so I look at um, Cole and the other imps who are flying around uh, wanting headpats and liking to play with my ears at the minute. <laughs> Thank you, chat. Um, and I kind of give them all this look of like, you didn't say anything, did you? You know. <laughs> Cole, who is face down in the ashes of the fire, slowly like waving his arms to make like a soot angel. Aww. Kind of just like looks back up at you, and he like blinks twice with his like um, glowing white eyes. No. Okay. Everything. That's fine. That's fine. Right, I mean, I, I didn't think the imps watched me sleep, they just... I mean, they don't sleep themselves. They don't? No. I'm gonna have to give them something to do in the evenings. They're imps, what do you think they do? They, they cause mischief. Oh, I mean, they're, they're generally pleasant. Uh, they rally to me, as do many small creatures. 
because of the warmth of my fires. That is very sweet. I mean, they, they do seem very cuddly. I have many fires in the great world. I suppose you could call that having one devotee. Oh, I see. Well, I mean, you are the spirit of fire, so and half, so... Why do you think I came to you on that night? Because I was in front of my fireplace. I was watching from your heart. I cannot interfere with the warmth of a hearth. I cannot make it brighter or hotter. All I can do is pray that you find the oil and the wood to continue the fire. And I will provide this homely atmosphere. You do a good thing. Especially to the people of Icewind. I think it's why I respect you so much. I mean, I wouldn't just let anyone be my patron, right? Of course, of course. I mean, not patron. Um, you know... You know what I meant? Wait, no, I said it right. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting flustered. Um, she's like blushing under her, <laughs> like her, her hair, her bangs go slightly more over her face, and she sort of buries herself in her scarf a bit more. He is too hot for her to handle. Can can we give inspiration to people in chat? Because I would, I would, I would so badly. <laughs> It's not an imp pun, so, you know, you know the rules. You can give inspiration to our dear Soot uh, if you make a, a, a good imp pun. A well-timed imp pun. Yeah, what, it has to be a good one. What though. did we have last week? Um, this is imp possible, or imp-spiration. Yeah, or something like that. Okay. Uh, so, he looks at you, and a wry smile appears upon his face. Come on, sit down. Uh, yeah, and she, like, cozies up on the sofa in her normal spot. Okay. So, would you like me to finish off that last healing potion? Uh, yes, please, I would love that. Maybe we can do it together this time? Although, I, I should rest, actually. I'm going up the mountains. Yes. You need to sleep. Are you are you going to make a potion here? Yes. Next, next to me? I shall make it at the table. Right, okay, yeah. Yeah, of course. Of course you'd go at it. Um, Do you wish to sleep with me? Very what? <laughs> at the table. Um, no, um, it's fine. I'll, I'll, and she just, like, covers herself in her, <laughs> her scarf and, like, buries herself in the sofa. No, I'm fine. Good night. Um, sleep well. Thank you for the healing potion. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sleep. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Good night, Miss Cinderfoot. Good night. And with that, and a small chuckle, he, uh, he continues to make your healing potion. Yeah, okay. Okay. Oh my gosh, why are you doing this to me? I know I brought this on myself, but... And uh, we're gonna call a break there, okay? Oh my gosh, you're, you're leaving me on a cliffhanger? Yep. Oh my gosh, yeah, that, honestly, it is a good place for a break. Oh my goodness. What do we- what do I do? That's great. Oh. And we're gonna have to figure out how you get up the mountain. My legs will be fine. Look, look, if I die, at least I've had some great, um, some great roleplay that night before, um... <laughs> Certainly, yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay, oh, God, I've got to, I've got to stop. Okay, everyone, uh, we're going to take a 10 minute break here and um, make a cup of tea and defluster.
very flustered. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, see you in ten. Goodbye.
Hello, everyone. I hope we all had a lovely break. Hello there. Oh, we had some got some nice food now, so our bellies aren't rumbling. <laughs> Gave uh, chicken some love. And uh, de deflustered. Oh, there he goes. He heard chicken. Shouldn't have said his name. Summoned him. His name is actually Kia, but um, chicken is for when he's being cheeky. Chicken or nugget or or a little happy meal. Yep. Don't know why. But bird lovers are crazy. <laughs> yes, back to simping. So um, uh, where did we leave off? We left off with uh. Our lovely so cuddled up on the sofa, trying to hide her fluster from her patron. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, also, just a second. The boy. The chicken, the chicken be streaming. I, I think he might be happier if he can see a little bit. Just don't like to see the other birdies. Goodness me, he is a loud boy today. Uh, so, uh, before Charles gets into it, predictions for going up the mountain. Uh, so as you know, we're going up there to see if the painter's lover is still alive. Do What do we think? Uh, I don't want to vote, because I, I may already know. Um, but I'm I'm not sure if the outcome could be different. I'm I'm very excited to find out. What do you think, Charles? Actually, no, I shouldn't ask the DM. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do I think about uh, predictions for your death? The what? Are we, talking about? Are we talking about predictions for your death? No, we were talking about predictions to whether the artist up the the artist lover up the mountain is still alive. Oh, well, I don't know if I can comment upon that. I was I was thinking that. Yeah, like might end up uh, the chance to save him and even potentially failing or not. Be interesting. I will tell you that it is a time-sensitive um, uh, exercise, and that it is um, it is imperative that uh, Soot gets there as quickly as possible, um, because of course it's a mountain. You're already in a cold place. You can imagine how cold it is up there. Oh, your mic is... what What have you done again? <laughs> uh, for anyone who doesn't know, me and Charles share a desk, which is, which is quite hilarious. <laughs> so, I can see when you know, things are all unplugged and stuff. It's adorable. Yeah, I would like to think he's alive. Um, I think it would be really cruel of uh, Wizards of the Coast to make it so he's unsavable. Um, but again, Icewind is a really brutal campaign, so, you know. I'm glad we didn't make the decision to go all the way around and we stayed here and we're going straight up, because I think it, it might be the way to save them. Hopefully. Okay. Well, I guess we'll find out, shall we? Yeah. Okay? Uh, your mic is much better now. You were just a little in and out, but I think it's all fine. I think it's just your connection. Yeah, it's okay. Alright then. Well, let's get going. So, it is the morning, and you wake up inside the, uh, the genie lamp. So, it, you have about an hour of uh, being inside here until, uh, until your, uh, your spell kind of runs out. So, you see the patron, and he is working away, polishing these little trinkets. How did you get on with the um, 
the po potion last night. Completely fine. I have uh, finished it. Uh, you haven't? I have finished uh, Oh, thank you. Um, may I take it? Of course. Thank Feel free. You. And she um, hooks it onto her, her potion belt, you know, at the side, and their little holsters. Yeah. Because as a solar adventurer, having having these potions is quite an essential thing for her. Um, by the way, um, okay, this is definitely too late to ask this, but I, I want to. What? Do you have a name? Do I have a name? Yeah, because I've just been calling you, like, the half-bearer, or, you know, the fire spirit. And I, I feel like... I feel like that's a bit rude at this point. I think we're a bit beyond the formal patron and, you know, servant vibe. Are we? Uh, uh, um, unless that's too forward and we're not friends and... Well, let's see. How about you uh, go up this mountain and retrieve whoever's up there? And, uh, and perhaps then I'll tell you my name. <gasps> Names have power, you realize. Yeah. You'll actually give me your name? Sure. This is a name that was given to me, bear in mind, so I didn't choose it. Is it embarrassing? Yes. You don't like it? No, I don't. Okay, well, I'm going to go up that mountain as quick as possible, so we can find out what your name is. As carefully as possible, you mean? Uh, uh yes, as carefully as possible. Um, I have an hour to, like, wake up. You don't... You wouldn't... Do you want to cook? It's together. I mean, like, you don't... I'm not asking... He gives you <laughs> the biggest, like, bitch what kind of spare. <laughs> I think you should cook. Uh, yeah, um, <clears throat> that's, that's what I was suggesting. Sorry. Um, I'll sit down and enjoy myself. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and she gets her rations out the bag and like tries her best to make them nice using the warm fire. Okay. Uh, make me a survival check. Oh my gosh! I'm so glad I got. 21. Oh my goodness. 21? Oh my god. Okay. Do I impress him? Do I impress him, please? Does the dating sim need to go up? Okay, so, um, <laughs> you, uh, bless, bless you. You, um, <laughs> you put your, your rations on the fire, and you slowly, you get a little bit of oil, kind of like, uh, make a, make a breakfast out of it. Mm. And, um, you see the imps slowly creeping up towards your pan as they as they get uh, curious. Oh no. Um, so, you make your food and uh, strike a ration, please. In yes. fact, strike two rations because we didn't do one yesterday. I am. We are the same person. Um, that's just what I did. You're amazing. No, you're amazing. Uh, sure. Uh, Kirin, um, and you have accidentally made uh, the most perfect poached eggs. Ah, <gasps> yes, I love that suggestion. Perfect, and I, I, I dish mine up. Do you, do you want to try some? I'd love to try some. She like sits next to him and pushes him the plate. He tastes it, and um, hmm. yes, it's okay. Okay. A little uh, lacking in flavour and salt, but that's okay. I I'm using rations. I understand. Do you expect me to lie? No, I'd I'd rather you be honest. Okay. Yes. Well, I'll do even better next time for you. Maybe you should buy some salt. I'll see if my budget can account for it. He rolls his eyes and, like, flicks your copper piece. Thanks. Yeah. 
That's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna add a couple of these. Yes, you can. Nice. Is that enough to buy a little bit of salt? Yes, it is. Sweet. And at that, I am. Um, I get up and go to step out the lantern. Don't me miss. Don't, don't, don't miss me too much. I'll try not to. <laughs> She's so flustered. Oh my gosh! I can't. <laughs> oh. Okay, please tell me I don't like wake up with um. Sethic in the tent, because I will, I will cry. <laughs> it's too much now. <laughs> you wake up with Sethic in the tent. Oh my goodness. What is going on? So, Sethic is awake, and he looks over towards you. Ah, good morning. Uh, good, uh, um, good uh, morning. Hello. Are you okay? Oh, I'm perfectly fine. All right, as long as you're sure. Yeah, um, we should get going up that um, up the up the up the mountain. Yeah, we we should, unless you're feeling ill. Why would in I? Which case? Do I look ill? Yeah, you you red in the cheek. Oh, um, it's it was just really warm in the lantern. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's really toasty. Um, can I come in there next time? Um. I can't bring anyone in it yet, can I? No, you can't. When I get a bit stronger, maybe, if you stick around. Sure, okay. Uh, is that how that works? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Alright, fair enough. Uh, well, I'm very eager to see um, if we can save this person. Uh, should we get going? Do you want to help me put the tent down? Yeah, sure, yeah. Let's do it. So, you uh, disassemble the tent, pack it up into your bag, mm -hmm. and um, and then off you go. So, you arrive at the very base of Kelvin's Cairn. Looking up, this mountain is extremely tall, and it seems to have paths running along it, but these paths are treacherous paths. I think that's where we're meant to go up. It looks kind of dangerous, though. But I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's not as bad as it looks. Well, I guess we'll see. Alright, let's continue. And he begins trudging up towards the path that you found last night. Mm -hmm. Let me start heading up that way. See, I'm not scared yet, because there's no map. That's that's when you get scared. <laughs> if there's no map, there's no reason to be scared in D and D. Is that so? Um, I mean, sometimes, combat-wise. Well, oh, we'll have to fix that, won't we? No, no, no! Don't do it. It's fine. So, as you walk forward, you hit your foot on something. You look down. And in the snow is a climbing kit. No. Oh no, is it on someone? Nope. It's uh, it's just a climbing kit. It's it's laid there in the snow. That's really strange. I'm taking it. I'm thankful for it, but I'm really creeped out. I like turn to Sethic and I'm like pick it up. Find us keepers, right? Oh, uh yeah, sure. Where did where where did you find that? I just just found it. Okay. Well, uh, good job. So with that, you begin to uh, to make the climb. The going is extremely easy. Um. So far. And. Um, it's not exactly a climb so much as a as a trudge. So you um you're going up, and as you do, you see a tiny little cave, and 
there's a dog that you recognize sitting inside the cave. It's Boy. The dog I saw before in the town? Yeah. No. He must have run all the way here and waited at the base of the mountain. I get on my knees and I'm like, oh, Hello, Boy. What are you doing here? His big shaggy mane covered in, in snow. He waddles up to you and just kind of like rubs against your legs for warmth. Oh, does he look quite skinny? Is he hungry? Hey, he looks a little hungry, yeah. Okay. I give her half a ration to them. Okay. And they, they lap it up, uh, thankfully. Hey, it looks like we got another friend to go up the mountain with. Yeah, it does. Well, that's uh, that's good. Maybe he can lead us. That sounds like a wonderful idea. Okay. So, with that, he begins to lead you up um, the the base of the mountain. So, just make me a survival check, would you? Absolutely. Twenty-three. Okay. That's amazing. I think it was a nineteen. Natural nineteen. That's good. That's very good. Mm -hmm. So, it will take a while to search this mountain. It's good you start it at the start of the day, mm -hmm. because you theorize that it will take around eight hours searching for the camp. Which means, from where you set off, you would have spent, what, two days getting here? So this will be your third day looking for these people. Let's hope they're alive. Yeah. Um, can we use Boy to sort of, like, follow his lead as to where... I mean, if he looks like he's sniffing around, you know what I mean? Um, you, uh, you look at Boy, and he's sniffing. And, you know, because he's a dog, he's, he's sniffing everywhere. It would take a successful DC-10 animal handling check to kind of, uh, get him to, to guide you. Okay, let's try it. I just have to get above an 8. 14! Okay. And with that, um without much instruction, just a kind of, like, urgency, you you get Boy to, to start uh, taking. Mm -hmm. So, you immediately veer off to the right and begin heading further up, um, away from this kind of, this plate of rock that you're, that you're, on, that you're on currently. And the first hour goes and you see a herd, uh, by herd I mean like five mountain goats. Okay. These mountain goats are um, slowly making their way up along a sheer path that you cannot follow. Um, one of them looks to be uh, a little bit older, their coat is a little more raggedy, and they're, they're at the top of the pack. Um, but they're definitely struggling a little more. Are they an elder goat? Yeah, they might be. I love that goat. I don't know who they are, but I love them. <laughs> if you had pittance, you may be able to follow these goats. But can Boy? That's the problem. Boy probably can't come this way, and I need to rely on him. Yeah. No, I I'm trusting the doggo. Doggo knows where his owner would be. No point risking my life for a path that is probably the wrong one. Alright. In that case, moving on, you're travelling against the side of a basically sheer um, wall of snow. This snow is uh, powdered snow, um, but digging your hands in, you can feel how hard-packed it is 
on the on the inside about uh, three inches in. Okay, so it, it should be okay to walk on. Uh, yeah, you're walking on like a rock shelf. However, the the snow wall to the right of you does give you a little uh, a little tension. Okay. Um, can I get out a pitten for me and a pitten for Sephic? Just to give us that extra thing to like hug the wall with, you know? Sure, sure. So pittens are uh, two pronged, almost like lather rungs that you hammer into the wall. Um, so you can you can definitely take it, and it might stop you falling down snow, but it will take a while to hammer this into rock. So yeah, sure, you can definitely hold it. I could have it to hand and see how the going goes. Sure. Uh, I'll give you a plus one to any uh, saving throw you make uh, when you're falling. Okay. Uh, 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 um. Thanks. <laughs> yes, the goats would have tried to eat my gear anyway. I love that. <laughs> Very hungry goats in Icewind Dale. What have they even got to eat up here? It's just snow. Uh, with that, you um, you continue going, and at that point you hear rumble in the distance. No. And and as you're going, a little like bit of kind of dust falls down this big snowy wall you're traveling along. I like give a warning look at Sethic and start treading a lot more lightly. Okay. I'd like to determine a marching order. Are you in front? Is the dog in front? Is Sethic in front? Oh no, no, don't make me kill the dog. No. Okay, the dog is in front because the dog is leading. And where are you? The middle. The middle. Okay, and suffix behind you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh no, I don't like this. So you uh, you continue on. What pace are you walking? Um, I mean, I'd like to be going quick, but on honestly, I think gentle footing is the way to go. Okay. Sure. So. You can go at normal speed, you can kind of like run, which would be double speed, or you can go um, softly and silently, which would be half speed. Let's... Oh, see, I don't know whether this is a... I'm creating vibrations that's going to cause an avalanche, or there is an avalanche coming, I need to be quick scenario. I'm... You're scaring me, I think I'm going to go normal. No, no. Do I normal pace it? Yeah. Yeah, normal pace. Okay. I think if I go too slow, um, we're gonna die. Okay. So, the path that you're on is about 400 feet long, and you're now 100 feet into this path. You continue going. You get to 200 feet. You're halfway through this path. When you hear another rumble, larger uh, drifts of snow fall upon them, and you look up. Five hundred feet above you, snow is cascading down the mountain, and it's coming straight towards you. Okay. I need you to roll me initiative. It's okay, it's okay. I have an idea. I have an idea. It's all okay. Um, I've even forgotten where our initiative button is because I'm so stressed. 15. What is the nat 1 for? Who knows? Is that the dog? No, is that Sethic? No. Okay. 
Who is the nat one for? I'm scared. You stress me out so much. Okay. I'm kind of glad I do. I know that's kind of a point. Yeah. Um, I should now uh, let everyone know this is where um, my past character Ira nearly died with the avalanche that's coming. She, she, if I remember rightly, got pulled over the edge and covered in snow and was suffocating and was like one turn away um, from suffocating because the rest of the party kept um, failing, rolling to get her out. It was, it was so stressful. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm, I don't want anyone to die here. The dog, Sethic, me. Okay. So, with that, let's uh, change up the music, shall we? You are 100, oh, sorry, you are 200 feet into this 400 feet path. From what you can see, the avalanche is 200 feet wide, which means you have to run 100 feet before it catches you. Okay. So. It's, um, Dog, Sefek, Avalanche, the one I rolled. Which means the Avalanche falls first. No! The Avalanche falls towards you. It's... it's maybe 250 feet away from you. Okay. Uh, what are you doing? Is it me next? Oh my gosh. Um... Quick question, does a dog count as an item? No. If you bag it, like you can't put a, a dog in a lamp. You can carry the dog, and because it's uh, a size smaller than you, it, it will be easier to carry, but it does not count as an item. Oh my gosh. Um, firstly, um, I'm handing Sethic both pittons and everything because if all fails, he'll need to put himself into the mountain uh, so he doesn't fall. Okay. I shout at Boy to go. And I'm gonna take a turn to run. Take, take the dash action. Okay. You move 60 feet in a turn, mm -hmm. seeing as you've taken the dash action. Do you you pass the dog when you get to twenty feet? Do you pick it up at that point? Am I allowed to? It would take an action. I said I use a dash action, so in this part of your turn you haven't yet used the dash action, so you can choose. It would only get me a further ten feet. Yes. Which I'm gonna need, honestly. But then the dog will go further. No, let's pick up the dog. We've got the dog. Dog for moral support. Okay. You pick up the dog, and you make it 30 feet forward. So. Okay. You, um... You see as the dog, um, kind of, you've taken it 10 feet, and it, like, uses you like a springboard and jumps away, um, bolting it down the path. Suffolk does the same, and slips. Oh no. Falling on his face, he gets up, and, with a grimace, begins to run. The dog has made it from the 100 feet mark, um, an extra, no, he's 120, so 130, and he's got to, he's at 190, so he's at the edge of the avalanche. 
Uh, you are 30 feet, so you are 130 feet up. And Sefnik, being behind you, is nowhere near that. He's, uh, he was behind you, so he's like 80. He's like 125, something like that. I've given him all I can. I cannot do anything for him. Um, I don't have any spells that would even help here. No. Oh! Oh! No! Wait. Okay, that's good to know. We have Misty Step. So, the avalanche is rolling down towards you. It will be upon you all in seconds. What do you do? Um, Sethic's up. I'm taking the dash action. Um, and then, can I bonus action Misty Step? If it's yes, necessary. You you get to 190 feet. It's 10 feet between safety and the avalanche. You'd have to use Misty Step if you wanted to get out. Yeah, I want to use Misty Step. Okay. And with that, you Misty Step. Uh, what does your Misty Step look like? <gasps> Her Misty Step. Oh my gosh. A, a, a warm fire themed Misty Step. Um, it probably looks like a tavern door swinging open, and you feel this, like, you know in winter when you walk into the shops and it's, like, warm all of a sudden with the heaters as you go in? It, like, feels like that for a second as she steps through. You see, like, a warm glow. Okay. And with that, you find yourself a safe enough distance away from the avalanche. The dog runs the remaining ten feet. And Sethek looks towards you. No. As the avalanche hits. <gasps> okay. So. You, uh. I'm gonna reveal the avalanche rules. Give me a sec. I don't wanna know them. I don't. I'm scared. There we go. So. You have, well, Sefek has to make a, um, a DC 15 saving throw, or take 1d10 dodging damage, and fall prone. Okay. Come on, Sefek. Does he have a character sheet? Um, he does have a character sheet, yes. That's good. Right, let's get uh, Sephic up. Sephic, it's gonna be okay. We're gonna get you out. It did turn to a romance to horror. Like a tragic romance now, clearly. Yeah. It's gonna be fine. We're gonna get him out and he's gonna be like, oh my gosh, so you saved us. Um, this is amazing. We now have a dog. And you saved my life. We can now have a rom-com together. That's how it works, right? With a 16, Sefek succeeds. And you see, as he doesn't, he, do, he um, stays uh, standing, but the avalanche still moves him, unfortunately. Because that's how avalanches work. Okay. He still goes down? And you see, as he is swept off the edge of the mountain, and falls 1,000 feet an <gasps> hour into the gully below. No. He falls with the avalanche, though. That should be a softer fall. Right? Right? Give me a survival check. He'll, he's gonna be fine. He's undead. I'm sure of it. Nat 20. He's alive, right? So, 
you know everything about avalanches if you wish to read it. Um, so he's alive, but he's buried, he's blinded, and he's restrained. Can he breathe? No. So, for every five minutes they stay in there, they gain one level of exhaustion. Six levels of exhaustion will kill you. So, uh, he can use his action to try and free himself. However, if he fails three times, he cannot attempt to get, to dig himself out again. Oh my gosh, okay. I know what I'm going to do. Um, is it still turn order? Can I go? Uh, yep, yeah, it's it. Yeah, go ahead, it's your turn. I, I would like to put my pittons um, in, tie myself my rope, and start climbing down to him. How many pittons do you have? Oh, I gave him my pittons! You have more than more than one pitton. I thought it, it was like two. Am I thinking wrong? I thought you could, like get one each. It should be on your inventory. I just wrote climbing kit. Oh, okay. So you don't actually have pittons. I thought they were part of the climbing kit. Let's have a little look, shall we? You better hope they are. I'm, I'm sorry if it didn't. Oh gosh, I really hope he doesn't die. I'm gonna be devastated. Campaign will be over. Just, just heartbreak. Has ten apparently. Uh, that says uh, Bell the Cat. Yeah, those are the. Uh, th that's what you should get. Uh, in a second. So yeah, we'll go with ten. Yeah, we'll go with ten. Okay, cool. So yeah, uh, what do you do with your pittance? Uh I put them in and tie my rope to them in a safe place and start climbing down. Okay. I. Am I right? Will this hold? We've done this before. Okay. Make me a strength check, and you do not have proficien pr uh, proficiency with the climbers kit, so uh, just be just be a normal strength check. Mm -hmm. 40. Forty. You dig your pistons into the snow. You hammer them in as far as they, pardon me, as far as they will go, and you sling a rope around them as boy is like barking at you it's like barking over the edge looking down mm -hmm. what do you do i climb down okay the rate of falling for a normal human is 500 feet uh, per round so do you want to fall and like repel on the rope or do you want to climb down oh gosh um yeah i'm Hello, you have joined at the most tragic moment. Oh my gosh. Um, someone has fallen off the avalanche. Oh, the hot NPC. We've got to go get him. Anyway, um, yes, I would like to sort of fall with the rope. I know I'm probably going to get rope burned for this, but I, it is safer. Okay. Actually, how long is the rope? How? There's no way. It's not going to, it's not going to reach. How, how much rope do you get with the hempen rope? 50 feet. No, 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 no. We've got to go down the mountain. I can't do it this way. Yeah. Unless you want to fall yourself. No. Why would I do that? How long will it take to get all the way down again? You've spent an hour getting up here. Oh my gosh. And he's got, what, 15 minutes? Uh, He's got... Yeah, less than that. I know what I want to do. What do you do? I want to hold my lantern. Oh my gosh, this is so stressful. Over the mountainside, go in it, and then go out of it again. Once okay. it drops. So the way this works is that you can use a bonus action to enter your lantern. So do you chuck your lantern? Yeah. Will it break? Oh, it better not. Will it break? It does have an AC and it does have hit points. Oh no, what do I do? You've I... got to make a decision. I don't know what to do. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know how to get down to him. I don't have anything. Um, Click on your genie. No, um, no, I do have something. Feature. My imps. Yeah. My imps can carry the lantern down. Okay, if your imps carry the lantern down, they will travel at a rate of 30 feet, or is it th uh, 40 feet um, per round. Per six uh, seconds, that's fine. So that would be up to 80 feet per round, and the drop is 1,000 feet. So it'll take 10 rounds for them to get down, which is about a minute. 
That's fine. Yeah, yeah. you want to give Seth like a minute of struggling. It's only a minute. He said he could last like five. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to roll secretly for Sethak to see how he does. I am not going to show you or Twitch chat, I'm afraid. Thank In fact, you know what? No, I'm not going to show Twitch chat. Okay. Alright. So, a tense moment as the imps carry down, well, just imp, it would be cold, carries down the, um, the lamp. You can see he's just, like, diving, basically. Uh, flying as fast as, as he can possibly go. He finally gets down. And, uh, he's just disappeared. You can't even see Cole. I, I roll out the lantern. I, I, to my patron, it would look like I, I've walked in the door covered in snow. Like, tense, you know? Like, ready to open the door again and go, like, straight back out. And I sort of, uh, okay. roll out, you know? Sure. So you, like, you uh, you disappear in that soot, open the door of your, of your, um, of your genie lamp, and instantly go back out. Yes. You are down, uh, sitting on a fresh uh, layer of powdered snow. Your feet sink two inches into the snow. Okay. Um, I start, like, crawling around for Sethic and, like, listening for breathing and stuff. Okay. Make me a perception check with disadvantage. Uh, seven. You can't find him. Make me a perception check with disadvantage. Wait, wait, wait. I have a an idea to make the perception better. Oh. He is warm, so there might be a depression more in the snow where he's fallen. Because it would melt. Okay. That's clever, right? That's clever. Sure, sure. Uh, in that case, make me a survival check. Normal. Nat 20. Natural 20. Look at that. Look oh at that. Oh my god. You see... A place where the snow is moving. You see his struggles from beneath the snow. Uh, I immediately go there and dive and start, like, uh, using my hands to claw the snow away. Okay. A creature that is not restrained or incapacitated can spend one minute freeing another creature buried in the snow. Yes. So, you dig your hands in and begin to pull Sefeg out of the snow. Mm -hmm. And this is the final roll for Sefeg to see if he can help himself. Okay. So, with that, you and Sefeg burst from the snow. <gasps> and he's up. Sefeg, are you okay? Are you okay? He can't like talk for a second and you can see like his eyes like are full of are full of ice and just like all over all over him is just covered in snow. I help brush him down like as much as I can. Okay. And um he looks at you and uh, just kind of like just kinda of, like nods, you know. Thanks. Thanks. It's okay, it's okay. I've got you, alright? We have to move before the another one comes on top of us. Right. Yep. And with that, he staggers out of the uh, of the snow. He lives another day. Well, another hour, at least. <laughs> okay. So you have successfully got uh, Sefeg out of the snow and looking up you are once again pretty much at the base of the mountain oh, goodness me we have to go up we can't waste time right yep if we wait another day He'll likely be dead. 
Are you okay? Are you okay to do this? Yeah, I I'm fine. I'm fine. Do you, do you have my pittance? He looks at you. <laughs> no. Sorry. It's okay, I'll just mark down that I have eight now. Actually, you know, I have seven because I left one at the top. It's fine. It's fine. I can get more. Okay. Right. We have to get back up. I don't want to think too much. Boy's still up there. Let's, uh, let's, let's do this. And with that, you begin to climb back up. So, I'm afraid, uh, Akikiro, you're not going to get a beach episode anytime soon. There's a beach episode in, like, the seventh chapter, right? Uh, there is not a seventh chapter, I don't think. Sixth but... chapter. Yeah, I think so. Uh, okay, so you spend another hour climbing back up. Boy is barking furiously at the both of you, but um, he does come up and like licks your face. Oh, that's cute, but also would be really cold. His tongue is relatively warm. Okay. He's a, he's a shaggy dog, you know, big boy. Yeah. He gets he gets good dog cuddles. Yeah. Okay. So with that, um, you continue up, going along this 400 feet long um, uh, path. The avalanche has settled, and the snow has, uh, has kind of made its way down. So you're no longer you're no longer in danger. And everyone can take a deep breath and relax. I don't feel relaxed. Somehow it's not working. Ah, the tavern music, okay. Back, back to relaxed. <laughs> Everything is okay now. Alright. Uh, so. With that, you make your way up. And uh, make me a perception check. Uh, anything. Anything for you. 20. 20. 20. You're rolling really well. Yeah, we're rolling really good. This is really nice. Okay. So, you, um, I didn't roll the rise tolly to be proficient in massages. What do you mean? That would be very useful <laughs> in Icewindale. Yes, yeah, safety yes. music. Tolly is proficient in acupuncture only. Because of the tail. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love that. Okay. Uh, so, with that, you continue up, and with a 20, you see something. You see a half-covered person laying in the snow. Um, all you can see of them is, like, their boots, basically. I, I rush to them. I'm so nervous. Please be alive. Please. Please. Laying face down in the snow is a humanoid in blood-stained, cold weather clothes. No. The figure in the snow is Garrett Velrin, the person you're looking for. How do I know that? Was, does he match the description? You pull him out of the snow and you see his face. He's a rugged, bearded man in his prime. But he looks... severely hurt. <gasps> he's not dead! Because he's still breathing. He's not dead! Oh my gosh! Wait, wait, I'm not a healer. What do I do? Do I have to use up a healing potion? Oh no! Oh no! I turn to Sephic. I'm like, um, Sephic, do you know how to heal magically? Um, I, I don't know. Um, here, let's 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 look him over, shall we? Yeah, yeah. Um, we could medically uh look over him. Um, 
And then at worst, I give him a healing healing potion. Make me a uh, medicine check with advantage. My goodness, the, not having healing spells is the worst. 20 and 6. 20. Okay. I can't believe he's alive. Oh my gosh. There's no way. <laughs> That's so cool. For my sake, can I ask something? Yeah, sure. Um. So it, it was a time-sensitive thing. How much longer did I have left? Was it another day and he'd be dead? Another night? Another hour? Oh, um... I can't tell you that just yet. Oh no, what? As um, Garrett has a small uh, necklace around his neck, and as you like open up his his uh, shirt to see his to see like where the blood is coming from to make this medicine check, um, you touch the necklace, and suddenly you're not who you were before. Suddenly, you are running down a mountain as quick as your legs will carry you. And um, you hear roars behind you. The roars of yetis. Ooh. And you trip and fall, begin sliding down. As you do, you you like hurt yourself on the rocks, and you come to rest in exactly the place where you found Garrett Bell. I take my hands away from the necklace and I just, just like blink. It was Yetis. He was attacked by Yetis. Right, right. Well, he's lucky to be alive then, isn't he? Well, kind of. Okay, um, with the nap, the 20 medicine check, can we stabilize him? So, uh, with that check, yes, you, you are able to stabilize him, and I'll tell you, he has six hit points. Oh my gosh. And one level of exhaustion. We have to go straight down the mountain. There's, I'm not exploring any further, I'm, I'm saving this man. We are leaving. And, um, as you do, you hear this mumbling. No. No. Garrett, oh, what is it? Oh, uh, like with a, with a part party of, of people. They're still up there. Oh. Harry Lou and, and, and Asterix, a Goliath, a halfling and, and tiefling, they're still up there. I, I, I don't know if I, if I can do it, but I, but I have a... I, I, I promised them I'd, I'd get them up there. I can't. I can't not. He, she, she looks down at him and up the mountain. And then looks back to him. And I promised your partner that I'd bring you back safe. No, I'm not doing it. You're coming with us. Please, I'll go up there myself. You can't. I have to, you I have can't. To get them down again. No, you can't walk. He continues to, to fuss and refuse. At least let me get you to the bottom of the mountain. Make me a persuasion check. Oh my gosh, I will knock this man unconscious and drag him back to his partner. He will not die, I won't let it happen. Um, sorry, was this perception? Per persuasion, persuasion. persuasion. 23. Oh, goodness. Okay. Roll 20, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, so... With that, he looks at you and his mouth moves for a second before he says, I, I, 
promise you. Once, once you get down there, once, once, once we get down there, you'll search for them. I will do my best. I'm not going to leave people up there. But I cannot carry three people back. There is just two of us. I, I, I swear, uh, we'll give you everything we have. I am taking you to Caird and Naval, or, or one of the other cities, and then I will come back. But I... They will have to wait. And he, he just solemnly nods. Care Connick is the next place. Yeah, that's where I was thinking. Gosh, I feel awful. I know they're probably going to be dead if I don't go up there, but I am just one person with Sephic who is already hurt. I can't. I, I can't let this man die. I can't. I can't. Like the thought of his like partner, like waiting for him. Okay, I'm not going to think about it too much because I actually will cry. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we've got a. I'm gonna take him to Kerdinavel. 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 You know what I mean. If you go, to, you can go to Kerdinavel, but you know, that's your choice. Yeah. We we're, we're going. We're going. We're leaving. We're going down the mountain. The others. I mean, he was out in the open. The others might be in a cave. You know what I mean. They might be a little more safe okay and as you turn to leave you hear this yowl from above you as two crag cats pounce on you and Seth Egg. no don't do this don't do this and I'd like you to roll initiative as I take you onto the map don't worry. Wait, are they called Crag Cats? Crag Cats. Okay, yes. for the entire two years we played Icewind Dale, I thought they were called something else. Yeah, I know you thought they were called Crag Cats, and I didn't uh, tell you otherwise because <laughs> it was too funny. Oh, that is funny. Okay. So, the Crag Cats are up uh, here on this little ridge, and they dive down onto you and Sevak. and uh, unfortunately um, actually no, I'm going to roll a stealth for them both My passive wisdom perception is 14 if that's any help uh, that is a lot of help, yes you're welcome Okay. they have dex plus 3 ok, yeah that's that didn't uh, you wouldn't have seen that. So this is unfortunately a surprise attack. Okay. So, um... They pounce upon you and make me a DC 13 strength saving throw, please. DC 13, did you say? Yeah, DC 13. 12! No! No! Yeah. That's mean. Sorry, everyone. Have to come back to the to the danger music. This is my first solo combat, and I'm I'm in the worst position possible. I was this wasn't the strat at all. This is awful. Yeah. Oh, you know, good. Okay. Uh, call the imp medical squad. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, no imps, uh, no imp medical squad exists. Uh, so, with that, I would now like you to roll initiative. I'm I'm scared, Charles. This is not good. This is It's okay. No no no, it's not okay. It's not okay. You'll be fine. Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Just add you. If you wanted a cat token, I would have made you one. Just say I don't need a cat token. I'm gonna roll for the for the cats now. One, two, uh, okay. So that's a twenty-one and seven. Twenty-one what? Uh, initiative for the cat. Oh. 
and then Sefek. It's a plus two, so an 18. And lastly, your boy Garen. Ooh, gets a three. Okay. So, uh, with that, it is the, the cat's turn, and this cat is upon um, is upon you, Zud, as this cat digs its claws into you twice, because it has uh, it has an extra action because of the uh, surprise, surprise turn. So, it's got a plus five to hit. Okay. My armor class is 13. 13, yeah. Okay. So that's a four. Doesn't hit. Nice. And a 17 does hit. Okay. Um, take uh, nine. Uh, no, take 10 damage, please. 10? 10. 10, yes. Uh huh. As you are uh, mauled by this cat. So, you. Uh, this cat digs its claws into you as you feel like like the pump of blood. Um, its its claws are, are long enough to dig through the material and scrape at the uh, at the flesh beneath. If you weren't wearing anything, this would have hurt a lot more. Okay. So. With that, uh, it's now um, Suffolk's turn. You see as icy blades appear in Suffolk's hand, and he begins to deal with the crab cat in front of him. So, what are you doing? Gosh. Um, immediately, Eldritch Blast. Okay. Uh, which I just coded in. Woo! There's a 14 hit. There's a 14 hit. Uh, let's see. A 14 does hit. Excellent. That's 13 uh, damage. Okay. So, with that, you hit uh, the cat with 13 damage, and um, it didn't seem to like that. That's for sure. Okay. It's definitely, definitely damaged after that. Gosh, I'm so worried. I really need to, like... Get away, but I can't. You're currently pro. So yeah. Is it bonus action to get up? It's uh it's a uh, half your movement to get up. Yeah. Or you could just um, stay pro. Or you could just uh what do you call it? A uh, misty misty step. I was thinking that, but then that's all my spells gone. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I. Is there isn't there an advantage to being prone? I can't remember what uh, it is. No, the crag cat has advantage on its attacks against you. Okay, that's not what I was thinking of then. Yeah, I use half movement to get up, and that's. Ah, uh, you would have disadvantage on the eldritch blast. Could you roll again? Why? Because you're uh, within five feet of it, and it's a ranged attack. Ah, uh, you are right. Twelve. Twelve. A twelve doesn't hit. Are you kidding? We're, I am not kidding. We're gonna die. We're gonna die. Okay. So it's now the enemy's turn. The enemy rips into uh, the the other cat that is rips into Sefek. No. And you see, as uh, as Sefek is ripped into, he doesn't bleed. So, Garrett pushes himself back against the edge of the cliff, and you can see he's fumbling to reload a crossbow. And now it is your guy's turn again. Because you're pro, he's going to—he's going to be attacking with advantage. Okay, yeah, that's 16 hits. Uh, can you take me nine damage, please? No, I don't want to. So, um, Sefek has almost finished off this Crycat. It's—it uh, it seems low on health. So what do you do? Is that this crack cat? That's this crack cat, yeah. Then I can Eldritch Blast that one without, um, without 
its advantage, right? Yeah. Okay. 25. Okay. Uh, 25 hits. So, uh, with that, let's assume you, you've also stood up uh, from your pro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you, uh, you stand up and shoot this uh, this crack at and uh, your eldritch blast which looks like a, a seething mass of like like warm certain cinders uh, goes through its pelt and explodes uh, somewhere within its body um, instantly killing the crack cat and with that this crack cat dies okay so um, Garrett shoots uh, towards uh, this crack out here, and uh... come on, Garrett. Oh, that's a D12. With a 14, he actually hits. Nice. Okay, he deals uh, five damage. So, uh, with that, the the crack cat like turns towards Garrett. No. No, 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 Charles, no. Don't do it. And pounces upon him. No, 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 no. Garrett's pro. So he has advantage. Oh my god, Crankcat, why did you do this to me? And deals five damage to Garrett, who has six HP. Yeah, Garrett's fine. Garrett lives. So. The crag cat, seeing its partner is dead, um, runs away from you, and uh, and begins to like run along this side of the cliff. Okay. Do you do anything? Yes, eldritch blasting. You can't eldritch blast as a, as a reaction. Oh, I don't have my weapon out, so I can't then, right? I have a spear and a dagger. Uh, you wouldn't have had it in your hands, so. Oh. You can make an unarmed attack as a as a <laughs> punch it as it go. Uh, what is unarmed? Unarmed is just your fist, so you just make a strength check. Nineteen. <laughs> Nineteen. Okay, you deal one point of damage to the crack. Yes. Nice. Uh, okay, so that kills it. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> the, this this cracker is is very much unarmed. Um. Sefek uh, turns to the to the other crack cat and like plants his icy blade inside of its its pelt and looks at the other one and just like slings a uh, a an ice uh, like an icicle towards the other one. Uh, it hits the crack cat, but the crack cat uh, continues running as it leaves your effective range. Is it not within 120 feet? It seems to have gone around a corner. Okay. It can leave. It's a wild animal. It's fine. I immediately go and like tend to Garrett. Okay. Garrett is breathing hard. He has one HP. And um, looking up to you, he kind of like, thanks. That, that, that's kind of you. Yeah, well, I'm not much better. We're going now. Okay, I'm not going up that mountain. They can probably smell me, to be fair. I don't care, they can probably smell me too. Okay. And I, I look at Sethic, and I was like, yep, they're not smelling him, because he has no blood on him. Sethic looks up at you. He, um, he smiles. He uh, smiles? Yeah. You see he has a cut upon his chest, a big, like, reeking. And, um, the cut doesn't seem to be bleeding. What are you, Sethic? Well, I guess I'm just, uh, lucky. If something happened, you'd, you'd drag us down the mountain, right? Well, if something happened, I'd likely be dead too. Yeah. Yeah, that's just what I'm wondering. Ah yes, the the safety music as we're slowly bleeding out as we climb down the mountain. Okay. So, 
with that, you slowly, you slowly um, go down the mountain. It takes you about three hours at this point, mm -hmm. but you're able to get down and go towards Care Conic. Care Conning's a little far away, and um, you've already spent a few hours up here, so that means you will have to rest before you get to Care Conning, or you can just do your business there um, in the evening. Evening is fine, I just want to get to a town. I'm so worried, I need to save progress, save Garrett. Okay, so you just want to get to, get straight to Care Conning, yeah? Yes, yes, absolutely. Goodness, I'm so stressed. Okay. So, having made your way slightly up Calvin's Cairn, you arrive at the town of Care Conning. You go to the uh, to the local inn, and you sit down. This half dead man, and. You can take a short rest. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, that regains my spell slots, right? It does, yes. And I'd like you to roll some uh, hit point or hit dice. Let's do two. No, let's do all of them. We're sleeping after this. 3d8. 19. It's plus your quad mod. Oh, we're back to full then, aren't we? Nice. All right. So, um, you sit down, and that was hard work. Uh-huh. You're telling me. For your first solo fight. Yeah, that was, uh, that was definitely hard work. I would just like to know, I am very proud of the idea of going into my lamp and using my familiar to carry me down in order to get down 1,000 feet unharmed at level 3. I'm just saying. I'm very impressed with myself. Yes, thank you. We did it. The first fight. Okay. So. With that, sitting in a tavern called the Hook, Lion, and Sinker, Aww. you are able to rest. But of course, this place is not for sleeping. This is merely a tavern. <laughs> is Garrett okay? Is he looking a bit better? Uh, let's see. Garrett is looking a little better, yes. Um, but he is not. He's not looking well. He's still looking exhausted. Yeah. If you don't want to travel at night, you'll have to stay within the Northern Light Inn. Yeah, that's fine. We could have a look. Okay. Uh, Suffolk, do you want to come with, or...? I mean, now we're in a town. You're welcome. <sighs> nice. I mean, I do imagine you want to come back to Ten Towns anyway, right? I mean, we're in the Ten Towns, but uh, do you mean a, a oh, specific Oh, uh, Bryn Shanda, sorry. Bryn Shanda, got it. Yes, yes, I want to come back to Bryn Shanda. Okay, well, um, we could go book a room in the Northern Light. Um, usually I share with people because it's cheaper, but um, uh, there's three of us, so uh, maybe you and Garrett could share? Or maybe his husband would get annoyed at that. We got individual rooms, but that seems... No, no, it, it, it's fine. Just anywhere to rest as long as it's got a bed. Okay. Right then. I'll, um... I'll pay. I'll pay for our room, and then you pay for your rooms, yeah. Okay. Nice one. Okay, and these, got, these rooms cost one gold each. Oh my gosh! Uh, you haven't got to North, uh, Northern Lights yet, but you learn that they cost that much. There's a little side outside also. Um, however, as you get to the Northern Lights, 
you um you see a pile of snow sitting against the side of the northern lights which suddenly springs up and reveals a swaying dragonborn within <gasps> who goes there is it thieves I, i've found those creeping bastards and um you see as uh, this like this dragonborn with a half like um like a half full uh bottle of wine in its hand looks towards you kind of squints um hello no um we're just here for the tavern right um I'm sorry i i must have just got j jittery um yeah i i i, I uh, so Sorry, <laughs> you know how it is. I uh, just he he's definitely drunk. Um mm -hmm. he is absolutely drunk. And uh you're from the Ten Towns, so you recognise this person as Trovus. Trovus. I love Trovus. Yeah. So uh Trovus is the uh, town speaker. And um, yeah, he definitely he definitely doesn't look the best currently. In fact, I'll show you a picture of him. I forgot he there was the townskeeper. Goodness me. Yeah, he's the townspeaker. Uh, yeah, so he he doesn't look in his best shape right now. He's a silver dragonborn, and um, yeah, he's significantly drunk. Silver Dragonborn don't get affected by the cold. They have resistance to cold. So he's he's like fine in the snow. He's not uh, he's not worried about that at all. If I'm sorry, thank you. I was looking for invisible um, bur burglars, you know, and uh, I thought I'd I thought thought I'd find them out here, but uh, you you just look like normal people. You don't you, you're not invisible, are you? I make sure Cole isn't in view. No. Do you want to help inside? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's, that that sounds good. Okay. Um. I sort of like guide him in the tavern. Okay. Do so. Um. And as you do, you uh, you see the tavern uh, owner looks over and kind of like rolls their eyes so you uh you see like a spot that's almost reserved for him like no one's touching this uh this chair even though the place is pretty full <laughs> he sits down in it and kind of like oh right oh, all right oh. yeah um and he like offers you his half, uh, his half empty wine. Oh, um, no, thank you. I, I don't really drink wine. Um, ah, uh, are you okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I just ever since the lantern um got stolen, I, I'm just trying to, you know, get 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 it back. The lantern. He has a severe case of hiccups and can't seem to get his words out correctly. Oh, that's cute. Oh, sort of like make sure he's okay. I'm like, okay, uh, lantern, got it. And I go up to the um, bartender of the North Look, like leaving him there because I don't think he's making sense, you know. Yeah. Uh, so the uh, the tavern um, keeper comes over. Right. Are you his friends? Uh, nope. No. No? Okay. So, uh, I'm not going to serve him any more drinks. Yeah, please don't. I just thought I would bring him inside because he was sitting outside your door. Oh, yep. He's been looking for uh, some invisible thieves. Yeah. Um... We've seen tracks in the snow, but um, no thieves. They they look like small tracks, and they stole the bloody lantern. 
Do you mean Twinga? I don't know what that is. Small, tiny things. That... They literally stole my darn northern light. It, it's what's it's what's the what's the it's named after. Oh, I did think I didn't it. recognize her because I didn't see the. That makes sense. I mean, she <laughs> so kind of like catches herself as she's about to say like, "Well, I could help," because that's her normal thing, you know. Um, and she <laughs> she sort of like, I, "I could um uh well." No, no. Actually, I'm just looking for a room. I have a very injured man who I just found up a mountain, and I saved him, and now we need lodgings because I know he needs rest and warmth. I can't. Gives you a look. And kind of... She's she's definitely a cook, by the way. Um, she kind of tucks in a, a rag at the corner of her dress and says, You were about to say that you were going to help them, weren't you? I know you. You do? You're Soot Cinderfoot. Oh, the name travels far. Yeah, you're gonna help. I know you are. You know, that's kind of presumptuous just because I normally help people with things. But I'm, I'm helping, like, three people right now, and I... I... It's just a lantern. Yeah, I know it's just a lantern, but it means a lot to Ali. Tell you what, you, uh, you go and speak to my sister. And maybe we might give you a reward, if you're able to find it. Okay, but... Can you at least give me a good rate on the room? Make me a persuasion check. This lady, she's pushing it. Fifteen. So, we don't have much, but... Uh, if you bring this this lantern back, it, it'd mean a lot, and the the room's free. So it, like looks up at her and softens. She just melts. She's a sucker for helping people. She loves it. She hates seeing people upset. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I was searching for Twinger from this other lady anyway, and if they are one and the same, then. Okay, I don't mind. I'll talk to your sister. Well, perfect. Um, Ali, uh, I got tired of cooking, so uh, Ali's in the back currently. You go see her. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, miss. That's right, my name's Corey. Corey, oh. Yeah. Corey. She's a tall human uh, woman, and she has short hair. Very nice. Okay, perfect. That's all loaded down. Uh, I head in to the uh, to the next uh, to the to the back to the kitchen. That's what I meant. Okay, the door swings open and you step inside, and you see a woman who is also tall with uh, longer hair. It's kind of uh, uh, brown and shiny as it uh, flows down her her back. She's definitely front of house and she looks um, she looks uncomfortable in the kitchen. <laughs> what race is she? Is she human? She's also human, mm -hmm. yeah. She she bears a striking resemblance to Cory. Are they sisters? Oh, that's sweet. Um, and, uh, oh, sorry. What are you doing in here? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Your name's Ali, right? Oh, uh, yes. Yes, I am. Um, your sister sent me. Um, she said you're missing a lantern and that you might need some help. My name's Soot. Soot. Well, Soot, yes. We do need some help. Alright. Uh, come with me. And she uh, takes you to the back. And you see. Uh, she's put a little, like, umbrella in the snow over two pairs of footprints. Ooh! Okay, please tell me they're Twinger footprints. So, you look down, and at first glance, they are not Twinger footprints. Oh! Bigger? So, the whole town thinks it's dwarves. 
Because look at them, they're so small, these footprints. But the thing is, how could they be dwarves? A, a quiet dwarf is an oxymoron. There's no quiet dwarf. So they look dwarf size. Like they're small, but they're not that small. Kind of thing. Yeah. Oh. No dwarf did this. Someone would have spotted them, caught them. No. There's something more going on. Besides, what use do hungry dwarves have for a lantern? Yeah, that that is weird. Uh, do you have any idea where these footprints led? They're leading straight towards Kelvin's Cairn. There were more, but I could only save these ones. Kelvin's Cairn? Yeah, Kelvin's Cairn. That's the mountain, isn't it? Yes, it is. Charles, no. Charles. What's wrong? I really dislike that mountain. It, it is such a death trap. The book... Damn. That's a shame, that. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I can make this decision. I'm, I am my own party. Of course you can. You're, you're perfectly willing to make this decision. However, as a DM, I must um, remind you of your flaws. No, no, no. No, don't do it. Don't do it. I, I... So, how about we have a little look upon your flaws, shall we? I'm role-playing it perfectly, don't you tell me! Uh-huh. So, uh, your flaws. Obligated to help, feels distance from the community, suffers four people. Hmm. I'm worried. I'm suffering! <laughs> I did, I did, honestly. I did. Doesn't mean I can't take it at my pace. Okay, Calvin's gun. Uh, that's funny. I have to go back up there because there might be some other people in trouble. Some yetis. And she sort of like, her eyes dull as she sort of thinks about it. I really am too helpful. I will look up Calvin's gun for some invisible dwarfs for you. That's fine. Oh, thank you. you. You're so kind. Um, we could give you some free beer if you want to. We don't have much coin, but uh, any, uh, the help's appreciated. And you can stay here whenever. Yeah, lodging is good. Lodging is... Lodging's great. Uh, why do I get myself in this mess? Okay, um, I'll take a room for the night and sleep on it. Then I'll go in the morning. Okay. So, with that, you go inside, and you don't have to pay anything for the rooms. And you can sleep nice and soundly. Great, I can... I can, uh, save my one gold and exchange pay my life up that mountain. <laughs> Indeed. Bam, a lot of things leading you to this mountain, eh? Yeah, and I don't, I don't even get to sleep next to Suffolk this night. Because we're know. separate rooms. Okay. And that uh, is where we will take our last break. No, oh, I want more. Okay. Um, everyone go get a drink. And let's, let's re regroup in ten minutes to continue on up this mountain. Oh my gosh. Oh, see you in ten. Goodbye.
Hello everyone, I hope we had a lovely break and welcome back. Hello there. Uh, so, we, to recap, have rested in the North Luck Tavern for free in exchange for having a look at their missing lantern up at the mountain of Kalvinskan, of which we just came and nearly died. And now we have to get back. Yep. That's, uh, that's what it's like. Cool. Thank you for letting me know. Can you do a little bit better on my mic, Charles? You here? Sounds okay. Okay is not good. Better? Okay, cool, cool. Yes, please do let me know if my audio uh, messes up. My mic is very sensitive as to where it is, as to what it picks up, and it's a little hard to predict how it's going to sound sometimes. Very temperamental. It is a little annoying. Let's hear her. Yes. Okay. Uh, Charles, go ahead. Let's do it. Okay, so you rest the night and you can have a long rest. Mm -hmm. So everything is back to full. Including your use of your uh, genie lamp, if you wish. Yes, please. Okay. The echoing uh, is when you hear Soph on my mic. We can't do anything about that, I'm afraid. Apart from me sitting on the farthest edge away. Is it very annoying? I can really quickly do a, a mic mic check. Let me, let me, Charles, if you stop moving around, give me two seconds at minimum. Properties, let's do a quick test. Testing, testing, testing. Testing, testing, testing. There we go. Should be a bit better. How's this? Like that? It sounds fine to me. Okay, perfect. Good, good, good. Uh, yes. Good. Uh, no? Perfect. Excellent, yes. Feel free to carry on. It was just uh, a little too close. That's all good. It's no problem. Alright, so, uh, with that, you... You can eat at the tavern, if you wish, or the inn, rather, or you can take a ration. Uh, how much do they charge for food? So food here will be around the same price. Maybe a gold for for a meal a, for all of you. A gold for a meal? I mean, I'm using a ration. I mean, rations are actually more expensive, but you know. Uh, how? What? How much are rations? I thought they were one silver. Sorry, five silver. Are they five silver? Well, yeah, you're feeding three people for one gold. No, so. no, 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 no. I'm feeding myself. <laughs> did I <laughs> did I offer to pay for them? Sure. Okay, then you're 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 paying five silver then. That's fine. Am I just paying a ration? Okay, cool. How many uh, silver in a gold? Ten. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, having eaten, uh, you see Trovus asleep in his chair from last night. And um, you see as uh, Ali is placing a, uh, a blanket around his shoulders. He might be a bit of a bad speaker for being an alcoholic, but he's still the speaker. Yeah. They seem like they have a little bit of resentment for him, but still trying their best, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, as I come down and I'm eating my food, uh, does Sethic and Garrett come down? Uh, Sethic and Garrett do come down, yeah. Garrett is looking miles better. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Uh, did we get Boy? Oh my gosh. Yeah, we did get Boy, didn't we? Boy is here, yeah. Okay, good. Good. I was just checking we had the doggo. Boy won't leave Garrett's side. Uh, I hope you all slept well. Yeah, uh, not uh, too bad. Hey, uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's no problem. Um, please make sure to tell your husband that I saved you, okay? Um, I just, I just want him to know that you're 
You're okay. Oh, so thank you. You'll come back to Targos whenever, and and I'm sure we'll have something, a little something for you. Oh, thank you. Just knowing I have a safe place to stay is good enough for me. Yeah, you, you can always stay with us. We only have a single bed, but you can have it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> they only have a single bed, eh? <laughs> They're very cute. Hey. Okay. Yes, they are indeed gay. Okay. So, with that, you uh, you let Garrett continue on. And uh, he, like, says thank you again and again as uh, as he goes out the door. That's very sweet. I sort of sit back in my chair, like, happy. I've done a good thing. And this is the thing that makes Soot feel the nicest, I'd say. The warmest is doing something despite all odds and helping people. Well, we uh, we did something good, didn't we? We did. Thank you for the help. I know it was a lot to ask going up there. Yeah, it's fine. I am. Um, I have to go back. Uh, up the mountain. So, uh, you're probably gonna head to Bryn Shenda, right? Do you want me to come with you? I... Yes. Yes, yes I do. I... That mountain scares me. So does the idea of leaving those those other travellers up there. With this lantern also being up there, it is a little strange. So you are. Get back down from there safely. We'll meet up again in Bryn Shanda. Do you know a place called the White Bean? The White Bean? Yeah. Iris Cafe, the hot chocolate shop. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know it. Oh, good. Um, well, yeah. You, uh, come there. And, uh, we'll meet up again. And, uh, maybe do some more, uh, jobs together. I, I like that. Does that sound good? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll make it down. And, um, don't worry about splitting the profit with the dwarves. This will be. Are you sure? I don't mind. I can give you the. Actually. No, I intend to meet up with you. And I hand him the ingots. You, you make sure to give these to the dwarves and collect the payment for us. I'll collect it for us, yeah. Yes, because I, I have to go up the mountain anyway, and I don't want to be carrying these, and if you're heading all the way to Brian Chanda anyway... Okay. Sounds good. Then you'll... you'll have to see me. Again. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll be travelling around, but, uh, you know, I'll make my way back to, uh, to the White Bean. Okay. See you there, yeah? She, like, gets up and gives him a hug. He gives you a hug too. He's, he's a warm hugger, isn't he? Yeah. I tell you what, I've, I've got something that, that might be able to help in your in your adventures. Are you sure? Yeah, sure, sure. He gives you a lockpicking kit. <gasps> yes. Yes. Excellent. I know it might not help up the mountains, but uh, you know, if you're going to be dealing with dwarves, then yeah, I think I'll find a use for it. One word. Oh, thank you. Ah! <gasps> I lied. It's not a... That's fine. It surely is. It's a thieves kit. That's what you're looking for. Ah. Sorry, I, I called it the wrong thing. Day. Use tools. Yeah. Nice one. Okay. 
Um, so with that, he he waves to you, and then he also leaves. She gives a, a longing glance back, you know? Yeah. So, sitting alone at this table, you hear Cole, yeah, yeah, climb onto the table, up one of the, uh, one of the, uh, legs, looks up at you. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, stop it, you. Wait, woo. Where did you learn to wolf whistle? Wait, woo. Wait, 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 oh wait, wait, no, wait, wait. you've been spending too many, too much time in a tavern. He tries to whistle, but it's just this really, like, that kind of comes out, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> wee woo, yeah. Love it. <laughs> you know, it's not my fault, Cole. You would be longing to hang out with someone, too, if, if every time you try to make a party, or meet up with other adventurers, they always ended up leaving. It's okay. Don't worry. You'll have us. Yeah. You're my party. Yeah. I wish one of you could heal, though. Kind of just, like, pats you better and leaves little soot marks on your sleeve. That's really cute. Well, I suppose we should gain the information we can get from the dragon, and then head back up that mountain. Yeah. And I, um, uh, finish my breakfast and stuff up. And head to the Dragonborn. I will knock off a ration. Okay. Kirin, um, sits almost like a snail. Like, she carries her house in her pocket and her entire party. You're like a you're like a little portable party, aren't you? It's perfect, isn't it? I love it. And my little snail. Maybe they're not bunny ears, maybe the snail is, you know? Ooh. Maybe. Do snails have ears? No, they have eye stalks, but you know. Oh, that's cute. Alright. So you begin to head up the mountain. You get there, double pace, and uh, you begin the climb. Three hours pass. You pass the snowstorm. You pass where you were attacked. And finally, you begin climbing up the mountain. With your uh, climbing tools, I need you to make me a DC 10 strength athletics check. Can do. Three. I'm going to give you advantage because you have a climbing skit. Twelve. Thank you. Twelve thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The first hour is, uh, di well, it's not really an hour. It's like 15 minutes. The first 15 minutes is difficult. Make me another one. Oh gosh, no. Eleven. Eleven, you have his advantage. Eleven was fine. D no, tw nat 20 is better. Oh, oh, was the eleven fine? No, 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 no. No, I, no. I, no, I think the eleven was no, fine. No, 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 nat 20, please, nat 20. Oh, no, no, no. We'll take the eleven. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You always take advantage, because you might get a natural 20. It happened, okay. you know? Uh, with that, we can forego the next uh, athletics check, and you succeed. Hey! No avalanches here. Yep. You are able to, to get up, and um, you you climb up to the top of this of this area. You're not yet at the top of the mountain, but as you look forward, you see a frozen cave entrance. Is this the one I saw in my vision? Uh, yeah, it might well be. Do I see any footsteps as I go up the mountain? Like footprints, like I saw before? Make me a survival check. I know this is probably improbable, but it's worth asking. 
11. 11. With an 11, you see scrapes and scratches around the area. Um, it's definitely animal based. You're not, you're just not sure what animal. Okay. I'm going to be going into this cave so stealthily and slowly, you have no idea. Um, so one cool thing I can do as a warlock, do I have this thing? Did we pick it? The invisible thing. Spells. We what? The thing where- Oh no, we didn't. It's a fifth level that, that, that it's that's unlocked. Fifth level? No. Yep. Never mind, ignore me then. Yeah. It's just stealth time then. Yeah, I think so. I'm bad, but they'll be fine. They'll be fine. You're all good. I know you as well. You're gonna leave me on a cliffhanger. <laughs> You're gonna do it, aren't you? I'm gonna get as far in as I can in the time we've got left. <laughs> so, um, as you go in, you step upon what looks to be a um, a bone fetish. Like a sm it's like a small accessory, basically. And it looks to have been crafted quite, um, quite carefully. I'm not touching it, it's cursed. I will... I'll examine it. Okay. It looks, um, make me a history check. History? 20. Twenty. Uh, with a twenty, you realise that this would have been would have been made by a Goliath that lives in the mountains, and you know that there was a Goliath travelling with this party. I pick it up. This. Oh no! 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 You're gonna do a vision. Okay, no! There no! We go. No! <laughs> you picked it up. So, with that, suddenly, you are not who you were before. You are laying down, and you can see three yetis. One of the yetis is smaller. These yetis are pulling apart something. Your eyes are blurred, and you realize your head might not be connected to your body. I... Oh no. No, why did you tell me that? I didn't need to know. Okay. I thought... And you are inside of a frozen cave. This is where he died. Got it. He's dead. Why am I even here? There's no way they survived. There's no way. This is a failed mission, like, from the beginning. You... You come back, and you're within your own eyes. This is what is in front of you in the cave. There is, however, a... an area that leads further up from the cave, that goes further up uh, the mountain. Okay. Yeah, let's try that. Let's try that. Okay. So, with that, I'd like you to make me a stealth check. Absolutely. Ten. Oh. Ah. Okay. Did I mention I was being super careful and slow? Yes, you did. Good. I can see that from the ten. <laughs> All right. So, uh, with that, you creep past this cave entrance, and you begin to head up. You start seeing footprints. There's a few footprints, but as you look, you see a pair of footprints that are heavier. That are dug further in to the to the ice. How big? Uh, human-sized. Okay. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, good. We follow these. So, with that, you, uh, you go up and you find a ruined camp. This camp is torn apart and looking around, uh, you see many broken tents, uh, ripped apart explorers packs and other items that are, well, rendered useless. And I, if there's anything that is like recognizable, I sort of take it as like a token. If I can't find these people, you know, I will, I'll, I'll give something to the townsfolk of like of theirs. You know, like if you can't bring a body back, you know, bring something. Sure. Okay, make me an investigation check. You can have advantage. Fourteen. 14, yeah? Okay. So, you, um, you look around, and you find someone seated in the snow. <gasps> it's a red tiefling woman. Her eyes are open. She's in a small alcove. And she has her arms huddled around her. Is she alive? Should I go check? Yes. In in real life this would freak me out so much. Yeah. Okay. And you see. Asterix the Tiefling. What is this? Who has frozen to death from the cold. No. It's awful. With her eyes open. Yeah. What it what is it that's in front of her? Is that someone else? It seems to be the body of a dwarf, with blue boots upon his feet. I knew they were all dead. I knew it. I sort of get up, knowing the danger I'm in, um, and sort of pay, pay my respects to them as I go. Oh my goodness. I take- I, I search their belongings, as I did. Um, I don't know if I found anything while I was doing it. The investigation check. Okay. You find a miner's pick upon uh, the blue boots. Uh, the body is headless. Oh. Okay. Uh, yes, Kirin, it is. It's a reference to someone only called Green Boots up uh, Everest. Gosh, that's sad. Yeah. And upon the body of Asterix, you find a potion of invisibility. <gasps> oh, okay. Well, that's good. Excellent. And a leather-bound spellbook. I will read those later. But at a glance, is there any interesting spells? Uh, you wouldn't be able to tell uh, without uh, a, a check, which would take some time. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Okay. So, um, the name of the dwarf is engraved upon his pick. His name is Barthum Hammerholm. Okay. Uh, looking around the tents, you can scrounge a full explorer's pack. Oh, that's amazing. Is 
this performance pack. Oh, there's so much admin and bookkeeping. Good. Yeah, Kieran just got the uh, just got the uh, the little uh, nod to Mount Everest. It's great they add that in. Yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, and if that's everything, then I am looking for this lantern and getting out of here. So, um, looking around, you can't see anything here. So, with that, would you like to uh, to head away from here? Yeah, I head out the out of the cave. You're not in a cave. You're at the top of the mountain. Oh. I'm, I'm apologies, yes, I, I head back down the mountain. All good? Okay. And as you do so, you hear this thunk, thunk, thunk. And I'd like you to make me a stealth check. Mm -hmm. 20. Okay. That was good. You see a huge yeti stomping into the cave. I thought we weren't in a cave. You're looking at the cave <laughs> You're not in the cave. Do you want to be in the cave? No, 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 no. Okay, the Yeti sees you. No. Roll an initiative. <laughs> no. Um, so, you, uh, yeah, you, uh, you see as the, as the yeti uh, walks into the cave, as you hide around the corner. I'm waiting like 10 minutes before trying to walk past that. Oh. Sneak, sneak past that stealth. Cole is on your shoulder, and he's like looking intently at the cave. Make me a perception check with advantage. If there's a lantern in there, I'm not happy. Ten. Ten. Don't worry. Okay. I, I know I should go in there, but I don't want to. It's so dangerous as a solo. I didn't see any sign that they went in here. There is no like reason it would be in here other than I saw. Like, I only saw someone die in here. I never saw any sign of a, a lantern. No, I'm not doing it. Absolutely not. Let's go. Okay. And so you go. Walking back down this place. So. As you begin to walk down, you uh, you kind of you're able to slide a few a few ways, but uh, as you do, oh, Wait. I see something in Twitch. Wait, that would have been a great idea. Can I do that, please? Will you? Okay, taking it back. <laughs> I forgot I had the familiar act thing. That's okay. Kevin Poro, um, you're amazing. I appreciate you. I also appreciate you, Capitoro. I literally, I've been staring at my imp, like, bouncing on the stream, and I'm, I, like, forgot I had one. <laughs> Good job. Okay, so we want, uh, your little boy to go in, yeah? Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, sure, you can go in. Let me just pop our little imp friend on the map. Let me bring you to the correct screen. Here we go. No. Bottom right. I'm not in there, he is, by the way, just so you know. I know, I know. So, um, a quick uh, go over for the rules of familiars. The imp can be invisible, and it concentrates on it like a spell, and it can do this as an action whenever it likes. Your imp also has a sting, and, um, yeah, that's its form of attack. And your imp, uh, you can look through your familiar's eyes 
if it's within a thousand feet of you. Perfect. He's so. he's just gonna be in biz looking around for this lamp. That's it. Okay. I'm not risking anything fancy. Sure thing. So, with that, you begin to creep in. Alright. So the tiny little imp boy sneaks in. I'd like you to make me a stealth roll on behalf of your imp. Is it using my stats or? No, it's using the imp's stats. Of which you have a sheet for. I do. I do have the same stuff. Can I click on this? It's not stealth. There's no stealth though. Uh, just do dex. He has advantage. Uh, he better. Seven. Okay. He's invisible, it's fine. So, is he flying or is he walking? Uh, flying, it's quieter. And he doesn't leave footprints. Okay, perfect. So, Cole begins walking around. You can't speak to him while he's in here, so what's the instruction that you give? Look for the lantern, come back. If you get in trouble, come back. Very simple. Okay. Okay. So, he continues forward. You are now in control of your imp. Please feel free to go, to go ahead. Can I just move? As... Oh no, can. Charles, I can't do it. My roll 20s. Uh, refresh. Refresh. Roll 20, why you do this to me? I literally hate this bug. Like, whatever it is, I'm sure it's your mouse. I don't know what it's it is. It's not my mouse. It's so strange. Does anyone else have this bug on Roll20? Where you seem to be right-clicking and left-clicking at the same time? I'd love to know. Fine now. It's not my mouse. Weird. It's going up, going up. Stress. I don't like this. I'm getting. If you right click, if you right click, you can drag them up. By the way, you don't need to use the. If I right click, scrolls. it will bug. Do it. No, Charles. Right click. No, leave me alone. Go ahead. No, no. <laughs> okay. Stop there. No. <laughs> uh, make me a perception check. With him. Yes, with him. What is perception? That's what what skills perception? Wisdom. Seventeen. That's better. At least he's wise. You can hear soft, playful cooing. And you also hear the cries of a humanoid. Oh no. Feel free to go forward. From which direction? From down. What is this? Alright, so you're there, right? Uh, Cole flies by. He's not being particularly careful, because he knows he's invisible. And as he does, he knocks a big rock off of the side of the, of the cave. And it... <laughs> along the floor. And you see, as a yeti and their child, a yeti tyke, look around towards you. They don't see you, but suddenly the yeti seems suspicious. The child continues to tug and push and throw around a lightfoot halfling who is curled into a fetal position and is obviously alive uh, because you can hear their plaintive cries. Gosh, no. Is there a lantern, though? <laughs> there is not a lantern. Gosh. Okay. I'm gonna move Cole away and scout the rest of the cave system. If that's okay. Sure thing. Moving up there, you see a row of seven small alcoves. In each of these alcoves is a head. 
a humanoid head. One of them is a Goliath. No, 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 this is awful. This is terrible. The remains of the Goliath are strewn around the floor. <laughs> He's been ripped apart. Keep going. Sure. Just uncovering it all. Okay, I've been this way. And I've been up that way. I'm gonna go a bit faster, but just tell me if I need to slow it down. Cool. Uncovered. Look, it looks like a smiley face. I, I, and a mouth. I'm just distracting <laughs> myself from the horror now. Okay. Going up this way, you find more ruined equipment. Any lanterns? Nope. Oh. Suspiciously, no lanterns. Any lanterns here? So this was the, is this the end of the map? That is further into the cave, and like it's like a sheer drop that you can't get down. Okay, side. so we have found the issue. Well, Cole hasn't found a lamp. He would probably return at this point. Uh, yep. So, Cole returns. And he... He tells you what he knows. Or rather, well, you've, you've seen it through his eyes, haven't you? So, yeah. you know what he knows. So, looks at him, scared. Holding him in, his, in her hands. Just like, the most, I think, affectionate way she holds it. And looks down at him and says... Well, friend, we've got ourselves in a mess this time, haven't we? And it's coming to the end of the day. And you hear the halfling inside. But that is going to be the end of our stream. Gosh, we're going to have to save this halfling next time. They're going to have to wait a week. They're going to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. But also awful. I forget how brutal Icewind is. I mean, it. I knew there was horror, but my brain had sort of processed that it was late campaign. I, I didn't... The Goliath thing is so sad. to figure out what happens next um, on session three. Yes! Oh, so exciting. As always, thank you everyone for joining and making the experience uh, so much more special to uh, be able to share uh, us reliving the Icewind Dale campaign together again. It's, it's really lovely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, guys. Um, we appreciate you watching every time and... Uh, we were really surprised with the uh, with the amount of you that there were. I mean, what, like 11 for most of the stream? It's, it's really good in my books. Yeah, we're just happy to be able to share it, you know, it's just it's just so nice. Yeah, for sure. Nice to see some new faces too. Oh, just absolutely wonderful. Um, if you want to follow along with my content, uh, I'll be posting things on my TikTok and Instagram, uh, following along with the campaign as usual, under Artless Paper. Uh, but uh, without further ado, we will see you next Friday for part three. Very excited. Indeed. Yes. We're also going to do some streams in the week. Yes, yes, got some new setup. See you soon, guys. Yeah. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.